participants are uh, told to wait for a bit. Thank you for joining. <clears throat> Everyone, uh, I hope I am audible. Am I audible? Okay, 
good morning everyone thank you for joining uh, welcome to the five day faculty development program on copo mapping and copo attainment organized by the iqac cell and rnd cell by of greater kolkata college of engineering and management uh, without further ado i uh, welcome our dear principal madam professor dr mohan das Professor Dr. Mohua Dash to give her welcome uh, address. Ma'am, over to you if you are here. Is Principal Ma'am here? Hello. Yes. Uh, uh, am I audible? Ma'am, you're audible, but you're not okay. visible. Uh, but my video is on. Looking to it? My video is on. Okay, yes, okay. Yes, ma'am. You're visible, ma'am. Okay, okay. A very good morning to all the dignitaries and participants. Uh, it gives me great pleasure and tremendous contentment to welcome all of you in the inaugural ceremony of the five-day workshop on COPO attendance and COPO mapping organized by the IQAC of DKSA. Uh, the major component of outcome-based education are course outcome and program outcome. Based on how well these two parts are defined and evaluated, outcome-based education attainment is measured. The main objective of outcome-based education is creating a link between the course outcomes and program outcomes for each lesson and assessment is called COPO mapping and by which the attainment is measured. Uh, it helps to encourage and apply outcome-based uh, education in the institutes for attaining a futuristic approach towards education along with improved learning outcomes. Nowadays, we all of we are acquainted with outcome-based education, and the topic is very relevant uh, considering today's perspective. I hope that everyone who take the result of this program to develop further knowledge in this field. Finally, this is an opportune time for me to declare the official inauguration of the five-day workshop on COPO attainment and COPO mapping. I wish all five fruitful days of this interesting and beneficial program, and also that you have a pleasant time with Team DKCM. I warmly welcome you all again. I cordially welcome our keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Sharudindu Panja, um, at this platform. I'm also proud about Jay's group because all the speakers who are uh, uh, all the speakers are from GIS group. Maybe they are directly in GIS group or related to GIS group. So, uh, thanking you all. Uh, over to Shubhadra. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Am I uh, audible again? Okay. Yes, uh, now I request. Now I request the uh, team to. Uh, go on with the digital lamp lighting session.
Is the lamp lighting uh, session over? No, because no. Shubha, yes. Rekha, madam, please wait. Just, just okay. our lamp okay, light. Okay, okay, yes, yes, that is why I asked. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. You want to recommend and start? Okay, yes. Yes. Uh, so we have, uh, we are honored to have Professor Dr. Shorabindu Panda here with us today as the keynote speaker. This is the first day of the five day faculty development program. Uh, let me introduce. Uh, our keynote speaker uh, uh, at the very beginning, Professor Dr. Shoradindu Panda has been working as principal at Dr. Shudhir Chandra Shud Institute, Institution of Technology. He has also been, he has, uh, sorry, sorry, there is a, he has, sorry. He has also been the head of the department and dean at Narula Institute of Technology. He has been teaching for 16 years. He is a PhD from NIT Durgapur and his research area revolves around VLSI design uh, and microelectronics, nanotechnology and nano devices, etc. His research papers were published in different journals of national and international repute. He has been to the conferences of international uh, repute and national repute uh, for uh, you know many times. He is a vice chair at IEEE CASS Kolkata section and an IQAC member of Swami Vivekananda College, Rahura Ramakrishna Mission. Sir, over to you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, you can uh, begin your session. Okay, good morning. Uh, participants present over the online and the offline mode. Mainly, I am very much thankful to the organizers to give me a chance to present the keynotes as a keynote speaker. And I am very much thankful to the principal of the GKCM, Madam. And now I want to share. There is a permission, no? Okay. The screen is visible. Yes, sir. Okay. So the today's uh, my first topic is the PO PO PSO mapping and the attainment and calculation. Before going to the main topic, I, I want to discuss that why the PO PO PSO are important nowadays. Because we all of we know that nowadays is very, the education is very important related to the outcome based education. So before going to the outcome based education, all of we know that 
the when the student learned when when they are clear about what they should be able to do at the end of the course what we are calling as the course outcome assessment is in alignment with what they are expected to do that means the assessment is the alignment with the course outcome the instructional activities which the teachers are going to present in the class which are designed and conducted to facilitate the students to acquire and demonstrate what they are expected to do that means the alignment among the instructions assessment and the course outcome so now what is the ob as per the william g spedy the outcome based education means focusing and organizing everything in an educational system around what is essential for all the students to be able to do successfully at the end of their learning experience or at the end of their course this means starting with a clear picture of what is important for the students to be able to do then organizing the curriculum instruction and the assessment to make sure this learning ultimately happens in the outcome based education the product defines the process it is the opposite of the input based education where we emphasis on the teaching and the system is happy to accept whatever is the result so why ob through the ob we can get the international recognition and the global employment opportunities more employable and the innovative graduates with professional and the soft skills social responsibility and ethics better visibility and reputation of the technical institution among the stakeholders improving the commitment and the involvement of all the stakeholders enabling the graduates to excel in their profession and accomplish greater heights in their careers and preparing the graduates for the leadership positions and challenging them and making them aware of the opportunities in the technology development so what are the advantages of the ob first one is the clarity that means an explicit statement of what the educational process aims to achieve clarifies the curriculum for both the students and the teachers and provides a focus for teaching and the learning number 2 provision of a framework that means the outcome based education provides a robust framework for integration of the curriculum number 3 guide for assessment the outcomes provide the framework for the students examinations and last the facilities of the curriculum evaluation the outcomes provides a framework against which the curriculum can be judged so these are the advantages of the outcome based education mainly what are the benefits for the faculty members if we choose the outcome based education number 1 is the creative and the innovative career that means the teaching will become a far more creative and innovative careers no longer feel the pressure faculty members will no longer feel the pressure of having to be the source of all the knowledge number 3 save the thinking and the vision of the students 
faculty members shape the thinking and vision of the students towards a course which they have to learn now the basic concepts of the goals objectives and the outcomes we are very much confused on that issues what are the goals what are the objectives and what are the outcomes the goals means the goals are the broad statements written from an instructor instructors or institutional perspective that give the general content and direction of a learning experience they generally describe what an instructor or a program aims to do mainly such that to develop self motivated creative ethical skilled engineers and researchers to meet the social commitment so this is the one type of goal goals is the in general form of the institutional as well as the departments and the subjects now what is the objective the objectives mainly is the learning objectives the learning objectives are the statements of what you intend to teach or cover in a learning experience the objectives is the statements of what you intend to teach and the objective tends to be more specific than the learning goals not necessarily observable nor measurable instructor centered rather than the student center useful in helping you formulate more specific learning outcomes now there is some examples of the learning objectives adopting the characteristics of the technical excellence through the systematically organized pedagogical practices in equipping the students with knowledge and practice for competing in the global competitive environment the second sample of the objective motivating the students to develop the professional ethical attitude team building skills and the multidisciplinary approach to demonstrate the ideal behavioral qualities while leading the team for deriving maximum productivity developing consciousness in the issue of the social concerns and enabling the students to upgrade their personality and experience through the community services to have a meaningful linkage between the institution and the society now come to the third part that is the outcomes an outcome of an education is what the students should be able to do at the end of the program or the course or some instructional unit the outcome based education is an approach to the education in which the decisions about the curriculum are driven by the exit learning outcomes that the students should demonstrate at the end of the program or the course this is the outcome mainly the outcomes provide the basis for an effective interaction among the stakeholders now the difference between the objectives and the outcomes the objectives are the intended results or the consequences of the instruction curriculum programs or the activities but the outcomes are achieved results or consequences of what was learned such that the evidence that learning took place 
objectives are written more in terms of the teaching intentions and typically indicate the subject content that the teachers intend to cover but the outcomes are more student centered objectives are the teacher centered and the outcomes are more student centered and the describe what it is that the learner should learn objectives are focused on specific types of performances that students are expected to demonstrate at the end of the instruction but the outcomes are the statements that specify what learners will know or be able to do because of a learning activity such that the outcomes that students must meet on the way to attaining a particular degree or diploma now why we want to write the outcomes the learning outcomes help the instructors to describe to the students what is expected of them plan a appropriate teaching strategies materials and the assessments learn from and make the changes to the curriculum to improve the student learning and last the strategies what they have made and the outcomes will be reflected after the completion of the course now the elements of the effective outcomes what are the elements of the effective outcomes clearly written the course level and the module level outcomes are the foundation upon which the effective courses are designed outcomes inform both the way students are evaluated in a course and the way a course will be organized effective learning outcomes are the student centered measurable concise meaningful achievable and the outcome based the student center means the outcomes are the phrased from the perspective of the student and which are written in the language that can be easily understood by them that is the student center what is the measurable outcomes emphasize the higher order thinking and are consistent with the university or the colleges or the departments and the pso that means the program specific outcomes what is quantized the outcomes are written in short in as very small sentences and it should be meaningful which emphasize the higher order thinking and are consistent with the university college and the department and the program outcomes pos and the outcomes should be achievable we should describe the course outcome or the program outcomes which are achievable that means the total number of outcomes is reasonable for this population of the students and is achievable within the time available suppose the course is the four years course then the outcome should be achievable within the four years or the course in the course duration this should be emphasize to design the outcome it may be course outcome it may be the program outcome and lastly this should be the outcome based the outcomes should specify the skills and the knowledge of the students which must be demonstrated to prove 
द मास्टरी इंस्टीट ऑफ द फोकसिंग ऑन द असाइनमेंट फॉर्मेट सच एज ए क्विच और ऐसे एंड द वेल वर्डेड आउटकम शुड रिमेन द फ्लेक्सिबल इनफ टू एकोमोडेट ए वेराइटी ऑफ फॉर्मेट्स फॉर ए कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग एसेसमेंट now some examples of the common learning outcomes of the programs i want to describe which is not student centered and which is which should be the student centered now if we write the outcomes like this the different theories of the personality development will be explored through lectures reading and assignments this is not the student centered it should be the students will name each theory of the personality development and describe the key characteristics that distinguish of the each theory that should be the student centric again the another example the students will understand the symbolism this is not the measurable we should write the outcomes which should be the measurable that means the students will be able to identify the examples of the symbolism in short stories and incorporate the symbolism in their own writing this is the measurable how they can write how what type of examples they are using so this is the measurable so we should write the outcomes in the measurable way point side students will analyze the american foreign policy from the 18th century diplomatic relations with europe to the monero distinct this type of uh, this is not the concise this is a hse type of uh, outcomes but if we write this in the concise way like the students will be able to identify how changes in the american foreign policy during the 18th and the 19th centuries impacted relations with the neighboring nations and the native americans so this is the in in the concise mode so we should write the outcomes in the concise mode this is not clear and this is the clear clear mode not clear mode is students will be able to analyze the american history it is not clear how they will analyze what type of american history they should analyze this is not clear but if we write this in this way that the students will be able to analyze how the american foreign policy history relates to the current trends in the american foreign policy comparison then it will be clear what is the current american policy foreign policy with respect to the previous american policy so then it will be clear tax based that means the inflexible the outcome based should be flexible in flexible way that students will be able to demonstrate on a mannequin the four steps in the administer cpr but if we write students will be able to demonstrate the four steps used in the administer cpr then it will be flexible now the second part is the program educational objective po the po are the broad statements that describe the career and the professional accomplishments in 4 to 5 years after graduation that the program is preparing graduates to achieve sample solve the problems of the social relevance applying the knowledge of the electronics and communication engineering and or pursue the higher education and research covering all the sectors social relevance applying the knowledge of the electronics and communication engineering this is the program specific and or the pursue of the higher education and research secondly and last is the program outcomes 
so the program outcomes are the statements that describe what the students graduating from the engineering programs should be able to do at the time of the graduation this is the program outcomes sample the design development of solutions that means the design solutions for the complex engineering problems and design system components or processes that meet the specified needs with appropriate consideration for the public health and safety and the cultural societal and the environmental considerations so this is the one po now the pso that is the program specific outcomes the psos are the statements that describe what the graduates of the specific engineering program that means electronics and communication engineering computer science engineering mechanical engineering automobile engineering etc should be able to do at the time of graduation po is the program uh, outcomes is the general form of some programs that is engineering or science or any uh, literary courses or arts commerce these are the specific but pso is the program specific so that means the electronics communication automobiles mechanical engineering etc the sample of a pso the ability to design the systems of the electronics and communication engineering using advanced hardware and software tools with the analytical skills to achieve the societal needs covering almost all the fields now come to the course outcome the course outcomes are the statements that describe what students should be able to do at the end of the course of a subject sample students will be able to understand the divide and conquer strategy for designing algorithms including march sort or quick sort this is a one type of course outcome of a csc subjects now how to write the course outcome or the program outcomes or the pos psos we should go through the bloom's taxonomy there are several taxonomies reported in the literature but we have the bloom's taxonomy it is the solo taxonomy the taxonomy is due to the thing gagan and the marazino and the kendall the scientists Benjamin Bloom was working along with a group of measurement experts in the early 1950s on the development of a taxonomy of the learning. In 1956, the group produced taxonomy of the educational objectives, the classification of the educational goals and book cognitive domain. After such a similar process of discussions involving several experts a major revision was proposed in 2001 it was edited by the anderson and the cratho letter and the book which has now become very popular uh, this is entitled as uh, a taxonomy of learning teaching and assessing a revision of bloom's taxonomy of the educational objectives you can go through these books then you can uh, get gather a lot of knowledge on this uh, uh, learning outcomes and the program outcomes etc so the original taxonomy had the six categories in the cognitive domain that is uh, the knowledge comprehension application analysis synthesis and the evaluation 
the highest complexity was at the level of the evaluation the categories were ordered from the simple to the complex and from the concrete to the abstract the knowledge was considered as simplest of all more complex was comprehension and still more complex was the application and so on and the more complex is the evaluation now the revised bloom's taxonomy all these categories except the application had the several sub categories the knowledge category had the maximum number of the sub categories for the uh, the knowledge of the terminology the specific facts the conventions trends and the sequences classifications and the categories criteria methodologies theories and the structures universal and the abstract abstractions in a field of principles which are there in the knowledge domain but in the knowledge of the bloom's taxonomy the requirements or the instructions that trigger the typical knowledge seeking or the identifiable activities in the comprehension level in the comprehension level this level refers to the student's ability to understand what is being said and to be able to present in his or her way the content and to understand the conclusions that follow directly from the content claims and the results application this is about the ability to use some abstractions in specific situations that is to solve the problems using the learned concepts ideas rules or the procedures analysis this level of the educational goals is based on the uh, logical thinking to achieve the objectives appropriate to the level of the analysis then the synthesis this level of the goal implies the ability to combine the known elements and create a new model or structure that did not exist before and the core of the achieving this category of the goals lies in the creative thinking the student will perform the appropriate activities aimed at the at achieving the goal and last is the evaluation the objectives at the evaluation level are standards that can be set by the learner it is their own personal interpretation but the knowledge is extensive sub categories represented aspects of the subject matter this represents a kind of a noun or the noun phase in the earlier bloom's taxonomy but the definition given to the knowledge stated that the student was expected to be able to recall or recognize the knowledge which is the verb aspect or the verb phrase this verb aspect and the verb form is the revised bloom's taxonomy which is established in 2001 this dual nature of the knowledge category the noun and the verb made it different from the other taxonomic categories the other categories like the comprehension application analysis synthesis evaluation they do not have this dual nature so this anomaly was resolved in the revised bloom's taxonomy the noun was the basis for the knowledge dimension 
and the verb was the basis for the cognitive process dimension the revised bloom's taxonomy is two dimensional in nature instead of the knowledge the remember is replaced the knowledge so this is the verb form is the revised bloom's taxonomy cognitive process of the revised bloom's taxonomy are the six numbers hierarchically organized remember understand apply analysis evaluate and create the synthesis is represented as the create and the evaluation is represented by evaluate the verb aspect of the original knowledge category was named the remember comprehend renamed as the understand and the synthesis was changed to create application analysis and the evaluation were retained from the original taxonomy but what changed to the verb form is apply analyze and evaluate there was a change made with the respect to the highest two categories create was made higher in the hierarchy than the evaluate in the revised bloom's taxonomy as per the bloom's taxonomy all learning can be broadly classified in the major three domains of the learning one is the cognitive domain learning second is the psychomotor domain learning and third is the affective domain learning the cognitive domain learning involves thinking and experiencing and the affective domain learning relates to attitude and feeling that result from or influence the learning process feelings and the attitude this is more important in the affective domain learning and in the psychomotor domain learning it involves the manipulative our physical skills example giving the bicycle kick sports or the activities etc where the psychomotor skills is needed and lastly this is the integrated domain where all the uh, uh, skills are incorporated cognitive affective and the psychomotor dancing playing the sitar etc and the domain can be changed we all of we know that in the examination hall very fast few minutes we are thinking 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 then we are writing and last 5 minutes we are hurry to finish the examination so the domains of the skills can be changed now in the bloom taxonomy the action verbs with some activities which are very much important to design the course outcome the and the program specific outcomes and the peos so there are mainly six categories in the bloom's taxonomy understand apply analyze evaluate create and remember so the action verbs these are the action verbs in the yellow color for understand we should use these action verbs to write the course outcome explain relate describe confirm convert match refer discuss estimate predict so these action verbs are very much important and these are the activities the green color these activities emphasize the different types of skills 
to analyze the understanding skills, application skills, analyzing skills, evaluation, create and remember. And these are the digital activities for remembering the bookmarking, copying, highlighting and searching for understanding the journaling, tweeting, tagging and subscribing. So these are the activities with the digital tools we can develop our skills. The remembering skills, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating and the creating. Now, now come to the main part, the program educational objective, PEO. PEOs are the broad statements that describe the career and professional accomplishment in four to five years after graduation that the program is preparing graduates to achieve. These are brief, clear statements that describe the desired outcomes of the instruction such that the specific skills, values and the attitude students should exhibit that reflect the broader objectives. Program educational objectives should be defined by the head of the department in consultation with the faculty members in their DAC. PEOs must follow from the mission of the department. PEOs are a promise by the department to the aspiring students about what they will achieve once they join in the program. PEOs can be written from the different perspective like career, technical competency and the behavior. While writing the PEOs, do not use the technical terms as it will be read by prospective, prospective students who wants to join the program. Three to five PEOs are recommended. There are three types of educational objectives which reflect the different aspects of the student learning. Number one, the cognitive objective. That means what do you want your graduate to know? Number two, effective objectives. What do you want your graduates to think or care about? And last, this is the behavioral objective. What do you want your graduates to be able to do? One is graduate to know, other is the graduate to think or care about, and another is the graduate to be able to do. These are the three types of educational objectives. And the educational objectives should be smart enough. Smart means it should be specific, it should be measurable, it should be achievable, it should be relevant and time bound. Writing the objectives, this is a very good method, the ABCD method. One method that can be useful when writing a learning objective or the outcomes is the ABCD method. Refer to the Heinis et al. in 1996. This method considers A for audience, who are your learners, who will be doing the performance. B is the behavior, describe the task or the behavior using the action verbs. This is your, it is something that can be heard or something that is observable by using the action verbs in the Bloom's taxonomy. Conditions, under what conditions, what tools or aids or reference materials can the learner use? Are there things that they will not be able to use? These are the conditions. And last, it is the degree. To what degree or the mastery, how well must be done, the speed, accuracy, quality, etc. Now, some examples using the ABCD models. A for audience, B for behavior, C for condition, and D for degree of majesty. That means expertise. Audience, who is performing the action? 
B is the behavior, C is the condition, and D is the mastery. Condition means give the conditions under which the performance will occur. Be specific. And degree of the mastery, describe the minimum criteria for acceptable student performance. It is optional. You can use or you cannot use. Suppose this is a sample. Students will explain the social responsibility to ensure that the adequate legal services are provided to those who cannot afford to pay for them in three paragraphs. The blue, the blue is the audience, B is the behavior, uh, this is the, C is the condition and B is the mastery. So now here, the students is the audience will explain the social responsibility is the behavior to ensure that the adequate legal services are provided to those who cannot afford to pay for them. This is the condition. And in three paragraphs, this is the mastery. That means in three paragraphs, you should write. Students should write. Another is the students will describe the steps in planning factual investigation. This is the students is the audience will describe the steps in the planning factual investigation. This is the behavior in legal research, including identifying and formulating relevant legal theories, generating alternative solutions and strategies applied to a hypothetical case. This is the condition. Here, there is no degree of majesty. So you can use or you don't use. This is the following completion of the science program. The student will plot a quadratic equation using a graphic and a graphing calculator in two minutes or less. In two minutes or less is the expertise of the majesty, degree of majesty. So there are so many examples are there due to the shortage of time. I want to skip it. Now the examples of the academic program educational objective. The academic program educational objectives are organized in four broad areas. That is contextualization of the knowledge, praxis and techniques, critical thinking and research and the communication. The contextualization of the knowledge. That means the students will identify, formulate, and solve the problems using the appropriate information and approaches. Students will demonstrate these identify, formulate, solve the problems, these are the action verbs. Demonstrate, these are the action verbs. Demonstrate their understanding of the major theories, approaches, concepts, and current and classical research findings in the area of the concentration. Apply, this is the action verb. Apply knowledge of the mathematics, chemistry, physics, and material science, and engineering principles to materials and the material systems. These are the Contextual contextualization of the knowledge type of PU. Demonstrate an understanding of the basic biology of the microorganisms. Now the second type is the praxis and techniques. Here the students will utilize the techniques, skills and the modern tools necessary for practice. Demonstrate professional and ethical responsibility. Appropriately apply laws, codes, regulations, architectural and the interior standards and protect the health and safety of the public. So you can write this type of uh, PEOs also. The critical thinking type of PEOs. Students will recognize, describe, predict and analyze the system behavior. Evaluate, 
evidence to determine and implement the best practices. Examine technical literature, resolve ambiguity and develop conclusions. Synthesize knowledge and use insight and creativity to better understand and improve systems. Now the last, the research and the communication. Students will retrieve, analyze, interpret the professional and lay literature providing information to both the professionals and the public. Propose original research, outlining a plan, assembling the necessary protocol and the performing the original research. So you can use one of these action verbs. Please try to use the single action verbs to write the every PU. Write clear and concise the technical reports and research articles. Communicate effectively through written reports, oral prepared presentations and the discussions. Work in multidisciplinary teams and provide the leadership on materials related problems that arise in multidisciplinary works. So now the POs, the last. And again, we, can, we will come to the PSOs and the attainment. Program outcomes are clear, concise statements that describe how students are demonstrate their mastery of the program goals. These statements identify the knowledge, skills or attitude. POs are to be in line with the graduate, at, graduate attributes as specified in the Washington Accord. POs are to be specific, measurable and achievable. So these are the two different types of POs described by Washington Acker and described by NBA, National Board of Accreditation, all of we know. So the first thing that we do classify the POs into the two categories. One is the disciplinary outcomes, the five numbers of POs, PO1 to PO5, which are the disciplinary outcomes and the PO6 to PO12, these are the generic outcomes or the professional outcomes. In between these 12 POs, the three POs are the related to the complex engineering problems, that is PO1, PO2, and PO3. Two are the PO4 and PO5 are the complex engineering activities related POs. And the PO6 and PO7, are the contextual knowledge type of POs. So the complex engineering problem involves the wide ranging or conflicting the technical engineering and the other issues have no obvious solutions like end of the chapter problems, involve the diverse group of stakeholders with widely varying needs, have significant consequences in a range of contexts have many component parts and the sub problems to be addressed. Some examples of the complex engineering problems like plan for supplying water for irrigation and drinking to a group of villages in a arid zone, design and instrumentation systems for managing available water and its utilization in a river basin, design a system for the construction of a large scale poor and the middle class housing in towns with population less than two lakhs, improve the quality of the power supply to a city or a district. These are the sample types of complex engineering problems. Complex engineering activities, they require the resolution of the significant problems arising from the interaction between the wide ranging and conflicting technical engineering and the other issues. They involve the creative use of knowledge and engineering principles. They can extend the beyond the previous experiences. Now these are the POs and the, what type of activities we can have uh, for the POs. So due to the shortage of time, I can skip it. Now directly go to the attainment and the mapping. 
So these are the POs. Now come to the program specific outcomes. The program specific outcomes represent what the student should be able to do at the time of graduation from a specific program. The characteristics of the PSO, this is very important. The PSO statement should start with one or more action verbs. Creating type of action verbs are compose, construct, create, design, develop, integrate, invent, make, manage, modify, prepare, propose and synthesis. Evaluating, these are the action verbs. Convince, critique, decide, determine, justify, analyzing, analyze, compare, uh, deconstruct, differentiate, examine, these are the analyzing type of action verbs. Applying, apply, carry out, choose, demonstrate, these are the action verbs. Understanding, describe, distinguish, clarity, classify, identify, these are the understanding type of action verbs. And the remembering, define, describe, identify, match, recall, recognize, these are the remembering types of. The action verbs should be followed by clearly the identified technical objects related only to the program of the concern and if required by the conditions under which the actions must be performed. The action verbs should be followed. The curriculum of a program is derived from the POs and the POSOs. The POSOs are the program specific, two to four in numbers of the PSO should be there. PSO should only imply the core courses of the program. They are should not directly address any of the electives of the program. The curricular gaps should not be there in the PSOs because it is supposed to come from the PSOs. In the PSO statement, the words like such as or like, etc., and various should not be used. PSO statements should not be POs rewarded in the context of the discipline of the program. The examples of some PSOs like the understand the modern management and construction techniques, that is the PO 11 words, to complete the projects within the stipulated period of funds. Apply the knowledge of the mathematics, science and engineering and fundamentals, which are related to the PO1. To the solution of the problems of the computer science and engineering. Suppose this is a total PSOs of the civil engineering. This is a sample of, of a PSO for the electronics and communication engineering. This is the sample PSO. Two to four number of PSOs should be there. Now come to the course outcome. The course outcomes are what the students should be able to do at the end of the course. It is an effective ability, including attributes, skills, and knowledge of the successfully carry out the identified activity. For CO, there are two extremely important features it should be observable and it should be measurable. So you should write the CO in such a way that the CO should be observable and the measurable. The number of CO should be depending on number of units in a particular course, but it should not be more than six. The autonomous institutions and the universities are not required to follow the unit structure and may have the number of COs as decided by the course content and the teacher. The structure of the CO statement. There are four fields, action, knowledge, condition, and criteria. Among these four, the first two are mandatory, the action and the knowledge. Every CO statement must have an action part and the knowledge part. The other two conditions and the, and the criteria are the optional. 
the action it represents a cognitive affective or psychomotor activity the level should perform the action is indicated by an action verb occasionally two action verbs are also used these action verbs represent the cognitive process or the process concerned knowledge part the knowledge which represents the specific knowledge from any one or more of the eight knowledge categories in the bloom's taxonomy the condition condition represents the process the learner is expected to follow or the condition under which to perform the action and last the criteria criteria represent the parameters that characterize the acceptability levels of the performing action now some sample of a co the sample one the students will be able to calculate major and minor losses associated with the fluid flow in piping networks where the action verb is calculate which is related to the cognitive process apply knowledge is major and minor losses associated with the fluid flow in the piping networks so there is no condition there is no criteria now the sample 2 where the conditions are there but criteria is none determine the dynamic unbalance the conditions of a given mechanical system of rigid bodies subjected to force and acceleration where the action is determined which is the cognitive process apply knowledge is dynamic unbalance the conditions this would be both conceptual knowledge and the procedural knowledge and what is the condition condition is the given mechanical system of rigid bodies subject to force and the acceleration so this is the condition but there is no criteria so there is some samples are there here the four are exist determine the root of the given equation accurate to second decimal place using the newton raphson method where the action is determined knowledge is the root of the given equation condition is using the newton raphson method and criteria is accurate to the second decimal place so there is the four parts in the cos action knowledge condition and criteria so now this is a sample of the subject course outcome co1 co2 co3 co4 and co5 related to the analog electronics of the electronics and communication engineering subjects now the mapping mapping of the course outcomes the action bars enables you to tag the co with the cognitive level we can use the simplicity set the acronyms r means remember u means understand ap means apply an means analyze e means evaluate and c for create the bloom taxonomy levels occasionally we have seen that co may have two action verbs then it is tagged by two cognitive levels there is no sharp demarcation line between some cognitive levels there is a possibility of one action verb representing two different cognitive levels so one needs to use the judgment in such cases co must be tagged with the knowledge categories one is the cognitive level mapped with the cognitive level and another is the mapped with the knowledge categories it would be helpful in designing the appropriate instruction most of the courses are strongly matched with the po1 it is possible that po2 po3 po4 and po5 are addressed slightly by some courses some specific courses that address the po6 po7 po8 po9 po10 and po11 the engineering society environment and sustainability ethics team work projects management and finance communication this type of the projects can potentially address by pos many pos but the pos address must get reflected in the rubrics used in evaluate the project defined now the defined it is the rubrics is defined by the icit 
tagging a co with any po requires that the both instruction and assessment include items related to the identified pos if a co is tagged with po12 then po12 is the lifelong learning we must show the instructional activities designed to facilitate the learners acquire the knowledge skills and attitude required for the lifelong learning now this is the sample of a mapping of the course these are the co co1 co2 these are the statements these are the mapping with the po and the pso this is the uh, level that is the i already showed the cognitive levels and kc means the knowledge category so this is the cognitive levels and this is the knowledge categories knowledge categories means psychomotor cognitive affective this type of and this is the u ap an the bloom's taxonomy levels so these are the levels and these are the knowledge and the class session what number of classes it is money it is applicable for the co1 should be covered by nine classes and the four lab session co2 will be covered by six classes or four lab sessions this type of so total 36 classes and the 20 lab sessions so now the map with the po with the co depending upon the highly mapped moderately mapped and low mapped so three means the highly mapped with the pos two means the moderately mapped with the pos or one means the low and the dash means there is no mapping to evaluate or to get some attainment then you should makes the question papers in such a way that the bloom's taxonomy levels should be covered so there is a type of some questions for the remembering levels for understanding levels for applying levels for analyzing levels for evaluating levels creating levels now there is some assessment before uh, before going to the attainment calculation you should make some assessment so there is two types of assessment mainly direct assessment and the indirect assessment direct assessment is the formative assessment and the summative assessment the formative assessment is mainly the cumulative internal examinations cie assignment quiz slot test report writing powerpoint presentation group discussion etc and the summative assessment is the semester end examination sw and the indirect assessment that is the feedback from the stakeholders so now there is some type of the questions for the direct assessment recall remembering and understanding type application type analytical type evaluation and the creation type now the marks distribution to make a question for the direct assessment from the recall the suggested range is 30 to 50 percent questions application type 20 to 30 percent logical type 25 to 30 percent evaluation type 5 to 10 percent and the design type is creation so total is the average is 100 percent marks and this is the question this is the module number serial number the question marks of the question which is related to the what co what is the uh, level and the what is the knowledge dimension cognitive or the uh, affective or the psychomotor and this is the answer key but this answer key should not be in the examination now the attainment of the cos this is very interesting the co attainment should be obtained through the cumulative internal examination cie and the semester end examination sec attainment level i give an example for the microprocessor of the subject for ec502 
the target level one that means you can uh, consider this percentage as you own and which should be defined in the bos or the bog board of studies or the board of governors meeting the level here i take the target level is 60% students must score the 60% and above because the 60% is the first class marks so here i take the target level for um, understanding the attainment calculation the target level one is 60% students must score 60% and above target level two the 70% students must score the 60% and above and the target level three is 80% students must score the 60% and above this is the co of the microprocessor ec502 the co1 co2 co3 co4 co5 these are the action verbs now the distribution of the question co1 the question number 1 2 and 3 this is the class test 1 2 slot test t2 and t3 and the assignment is t4 and the quiz so co1 cover the class test 1 question number 1 2 3 for slot test 1 question number 1 for slot test 2 question number 1 was co2 for the slot test co question number 2 3 4 5 and the slot test 2 is question number 2 so you can put the questions by covering all the co's it should be in the different examinations so now summary of the calculations of the of a particular subject here the total number of students is 141 so here the maximum marks every question six 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 five questions 30 marks so the student's name question number one this is three three means total score out of six three okay question number two this is three this is three this is three this is three this is four this is four so this is the obtained marks so in the 30 the obimunnu score is 15 similarly the obiru is 30 is 17 the aditya is 19 so there are the students 141 students they are the scoring the obtained marks out of 30 they score what is the percentage this is the 50 percent this is the 56.67 this is the 79.17, this is the 83.33, this is the 73.33. So now, score of the grading, scale of 3, that means the greater than 60%. Then 3, if it is greater than 40 to 60, then 2, and is less than uh, 40, this is 1. So put this here, the level. So if we, they, they score the greater than 60, then we should put 3. And if it is 60 to, uh, 40 to 60, then it is 2. So then we should calculate our target is more than 60%. So how many students score the more than 60%? We should count it. Here this is Aditya is 79.17, so the target achieved, 83.33 target achieved, Oindrila target achieved. So here, by counting the student's number, we get the total number of 105, 105 students scored more than 60% marks. Okay? So, come to the next table that the average grading of the scale of 3 is 2.7, 2.8. How it will be calculated? The calculated by this. Total number of 2, 2, 3, 3, we can sum, sum, get the summary of the total addition of this grade. And now this total number of grade divided by the total number of student 141 
then we will get the average of the getting 2.7 this is only for co1 this is only for co1 calculation so now we should calculate for co1 co2 co3 co4 co5 if there is a five number of co's exist so then we can calculate for co1 calculate for co2 the average grading so by calculation we get the average grading for co1 is 2.7 for co2 the 2.8 for co3 2.8 for co4 2.7 and for co5 2.7 now how many students who score the greater than 60% marks in co1 we get the 74.5% 105 by 141 similarly for co2 84.4% co3 80.1% 80.8% for co4 67.4% and for co5 68.2%. So now, how many number of students? Because our level one is 60% students score more than 60% marks. So now there is the CO that is 25.5%. This is 15%, 19%, 32.6%, 30%. So number of percentage of the score is below 40%. That is zero. Only the CO five is one point four percent, but we can get the total number of student more than sixty percent is all are the greater than sixty percent. CO one, CO two, CO three, CO four, CO five. CO one is seventy four, CO two is eighty four, CO three is eighty, CO four is sixty seven, CO five is sixty eight. Now, this is the another table. CO one, the percentage are here. So CO four is the level two. CO one is level two. Seventy percent more than seventy percent students score more than sixty percent. So that is CO two. So that is level two. CO two is eighty percent more than eighty percent score the more sixty percent more than sixty percent. So then it is level three. Eighty percent level three. CO four level one. CO five level one. So now the average of the CO attainment of the five zero two is C five zero two is three three six eight nine ten by five. So that means level two. So the EC five zero two microprocessor subject crossed the attainment level level two. This subject is not yet to achieve the level three. It crossed the level one. And now attain is the level two, so the EC five zero two yet to achieve the level three. So now the eighty percent students score sixty percent marks in the end semester examination. Therefore, the average attainment of the COs through the SSC is the target level three. That means the target level three has been achieved through the end semester examination for the autonomous. Uh, uh, colleges, they can directly assign, uh, put their marks, or uh, get their marks of the students and calculate these eighty percent students how many students score the target level. So they can achieve. But for the non-autonomous uh, institution, they should depends upon the their affiliated university results. so according to their university results they can get this percentage of the student score and the level so from our university we can get the 80% student score 60% marks in the end semester examinations so therefore the average attainment of the cos through the ssc is the level 3 because our level 3 is the 80% student crossed the 60% marks so the overall co attainment in the scale of 3 that is 40% of the target level of the cie and the 60% of the target level of the scc that means as per the nba tier 2 example overall co attainment is the 20% of the cie and 80% of the scc this is the mention in the tier 2 sar that program may consider may such the x percent of the ceo 
CIE and the Y percent of the SCC with due justification instead of 20 percent and the 80 percent of the SCC. So this should be decided in the BOG or BOS. In this presentation, we have considered the 40 percent of the CIE and the 60 percent of the SEC. So the 40 percent of the CIE, the level two, that means 40 percent of the two and the 60 percent of the level three. So that is 60 percent of the three. So that means 2.6. So for the attainment of the all courses, follow the CO articulation matrix. Now come to the PO attainment. The direct assessment through the CIE and the SEC and the indirect assessment, the exit survey. Now the map mapped with the CO of the with the all the PO. All the POs should not be mapped in the similar priorities with all COs. All the POs should not be mapped in the similar priorities with the all COs. Any CO may not be mapped with the POs, all POs, but all the POs should be mapped with the overall COs. Overall CO means this. So overall CO must be mapped with the all POs. But any of the CO, one CO should not be matched the all POs. Now the mapping of the PSO. These are the PSO with the CO, the average PSO is this. Now come to the mapping of the EC502 with the PEOs. We can get from this table, from this table. This is the EC502. This is the EC502. 3322121111. So now we put here in this table. Okay. Now the overall CO attainment of the EC502 is 2.6. We already get from the CO attainment. Therefore, the contribution of the CO attainment of the EC502 to the PO attainment is shown in the table below. This is how we will calculate it because this PO1 is mapped with the CO is 3 and our highest target is 3. Okay. But the CO attainment is for this subject is 2.6. So for PO1, we can get like this 3. This is the PO mapped with 3 by the total target level that is 3 into what is the CO attainment of this subject is 2.6. So we can get 3 by 3 into 2.6. Then we can get 2.6. For PO2, that is 3. So 3 by 3 into 2.6. So then we can get 2.6. Now for this PO8, PO8 is 1. So our highest target is 3. So 1 by 3 into the attained CO is 2.6. So 1 by 3 into 2.6, then we will get 0 0.87. So similarly, we can get all the POs mapped with the CO. So then this is the PO articulation matrix. So for CO, uh, one subject that is C101, we can get this. For our microprocessor, which is calculated in this table, we can put this here, EC502, 2.6, 2.6, 1.73, 0 0.87, 0 0.87, 2.6. Now, if we put for the all subjects in this table with the PO's attainment, so then we can get the total PO1 divided by the all subjects, then we can get the average direct attainment level for PO1. For PO2, for PO3, like this. This is the direct attainment is means the average of the all the PO direct attainment. Okay. So then this is the direct attainment process. So we can get the direct attainment for the 
um, uh, one subject of the elect uh, so, sorry uh, for the course of the electronics and publication engineering program we can get the pure attainment like this by the direct attainment process now this is the indirect process the survey one the alumni feedback survey two exit student feedback survey three the employers feedback survey four the student feedback survey five is the faculty feedback and mapped with this attainment like the previous one so we can get the indirect attainment like this now the final attainment the overall attainment the overall attainment is the 80 percent of the direct attainment and 20 percent of the indirect attainment so here therefore the overall attainment for po1 is 80 percent of the 2.27 and that 20 percent of the survey that means indirect attainment so for 80 percent of the 2.27 and 20 percent of the three that means the 2.42 so similar way the we can the other po's are calculated in the table below for direct attainment is like this indirect attainment is like this and now the overall attainment is the average of the direct and indirect attainment so that is the 2.42, no, not average. This is the 80% of the direct attainment and 20% of the indirect attainment. That is 2.42. So here, this is the 2.42. Here, this is the 80% of the 2.24 and 20% of the 3. Then we will get 2.39. For pure 10, 80% of the 1.76 and 3% of the 20% uh, of the 2.5. We, we, we get the 1.91. So this is the overall PO attainment. So target level of the POs should be defined for the program. Target level of the different POs may be different value. If all the POs are attained, then the program is running successfully, context to the OBE. If some POs are not attained, then the action needs to be taken to achieve the attainment and all the POs should be attained. If the, all the POs should attend, then you can increase your cutoff level, the attainment level. Firstly, I take that 60%, then if the all POs are attained, then we can go for the 70%. Then the 70% is achieved, then we can go for the 80%. So the target level should be fixed in the BOS and BOG. Okay, so this is the total overall attainment procedure. Thank you. Any question? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Sir, thank you uh, for this presentation, sir. Uh, Shubhano Rekha, ma'am. Yes. Ma are you present? Yes, yes. The participants are requested to uh, ask any questions to sir. Participants, you can ask your questions. You can send any question through my email also. I will be happy to send the reply. Anyone? Yes, yes. Uh, we should wrap this up then. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for your uh, enriching and insightful uh, uh, presentation. Thank you so much. We are honored to have you. Um, I request Gopal Chakraborty sir to present you with uh, a little memento that we prepared, digital memento. Thank you.
Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so, Nupata, sir, shall we uh, wrap up this session then? Yes, yes. Uh, the, the session is complete and in this first half. Our next session will start from 2 p.m. So, participants are requested to join uh, from 2 p.m. And thank you very much, sir, uh, Shwarandu Panda, sir for your nice presentation and we uh, definitely we are enriched for your uh, presentation and which uh, will uh, helpful in our future uh, academic process sir thank you thank you very much sir thank you all thank you uh, participants are requested to fill up the feedback link that is available in your chat box in the youtube and also in the zoom chat box so kindly fill up the feedback link Participants are requested to fill the feedback form, uh, which already shared in uh, Zoom message box, YouTube link, and as well as WhatsApp group. Thank you very much for all participants. All participants are requested to join for our next session from 2 p.m. So uh, participants can leave now, right? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Participants can leave now. Please join uh, in time for the afternoon session. Thank you.
um, good afternoon to everyone. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Shubhanorika, ma'am, are you present? Shubhanorika, ma'am. Shubhanorika, madam. You are not audible, ma'am. Please unmute yourself, ma'am. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So shall we wait? Participants? Shubhanuraka, madam, uh, oh. our speaker, uh, Dr. Shobita Vattajariya, ma'am, already joined. Yes, so we can begin. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining again. Uh, we are going to begin our afternoon session of the uh, first day of this five-day faculty development program. And now we have an extinguished speaker today with us. Uh, she's Dr. Songita Bhattacharya. She will be speaking on exam reformation to increase attainment of C CO and PO. Uh, let me introduce her to the participant. Dr. Shongita Bhattacharya is working as Associate Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Guru Nanak Institute of Technology. She has served as the head of the department for two and a half years. Presently, she is on lien for her postdoctoral research work. Dr. Shongita Bhattacharya has around 12 years of experience, including 7.5 years in academia and four years of research experience. She completed her PhD from National Institute of Technology, Tiruchirapalli. She is a gold medalist and university topper in MTech under WBUT. She has published, published 10, uh, more than uh, 10 research papers in international journals and conferences. Also, she is a member of IEEE Society and ACM. She is also a reviewer in number of reputed international journals. She has also acted as a resource person in conferences, FDP, etc. Uh, Ma'am, over to you. You can begin your session. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. We are honored to have you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. First of all, uh, thank you very much for this invitation. And I am honored, especially I am honored because um, the topic uh, on which I'm going to discuss today is a very critical one. I think those who are involved in education right now and academics and uh, those who are facing in the NAC and so on accreditation, they all know how important it is to understand this topic. And um, I'm beginning with this because I believe that what I am going to present today is going to be my point of view, what is my understanding, because there is no thumb rule. I believe there is no thumb rule in understanding uh, what is CEO, what is uh, attainment, and how you can reform it, and so on. 
it is individual to individual institute to institute department to department this this uh, knowledge and this kind of understanding will differ that is my opinion so uh, this forum uh, though i am uh, going to speak on the topic but i will be requesting all my participants because i believe all of you are from academics and all of you have your point of view in understanding so i will uh, try to make this an interactive session and i will be very happy if uh, well uh, going through the session if anybody has anything to comment to add on to it i will be very happy that if you can do it because it will also be a kind of learning for me so with this i begin the session and you can um, if you have any comments i don't know whether you will be able to unmute yourself and speak what you can do is that you can write in the chat box and i will be accordingly answering it as per my capacity because i also don't know everything regarding this because it's a huge it's like a ocean uh, more and more you explore more and more you will be getting on to it and you don't know whether you in the right direction or not so with this i will be um, i will be uh, starting my session today so i will be just uh, switching off my video now So is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Screen is visible, ma'am. Thank you so much. So, so, um, the topic of my presentation is exam reformation to increase the attainment of CEO and P. but i believe before we go into this topic there are several things which are attached to it which we need to know which we need to understand only then we will be understanding how it can be reformed so this is a brief outline of my presentation today so first i am going to give a brief idea about the outcome based education then what are the program outcomes uh what is bloom's taxonomy what are uh, course outcomes uh, then a copo mapping attainment and conclusion now um why i am starting with the outcome based education because the topic uh, co attainment of copo mapping comes from the root of that is the outcome based education because we are we because we are following the outcome based education therefore we are becoming more and more concerned about this attainment issue so according to tucker 2004 he commented in 2004 that it is a process outcome based education is a process that involves the restructuring of curriculum assessment and reporting practices in education so whatever was being followed before is actually not focused on the outcome of the education in a sense that now when we are teaching some students we are more concerned about not only imparting the knowledge to the students at the same time we are also concerned that after they read a certain topic so we have gone to the micro level now we are not concerned about the outcome of the program we have brought it down to the outcome of a course we have brought it down to the outcome of a topic of a course so 
to do that what needs to be done is the restructuring of the existing curriculum the assessment methods so the way we are assessing the knowledge of a student so that needs to be changed and the reporting practices in education all this to achieve the higher order learning and mastery now there are several terminologies in it which are quite abstract because we don't know what is higher order learning for us who are belongs to the engineering background we know that the placement of the students reflect the higher order learning because as much as students get uh, uh, placed in the companies then we can tell that yes our our education system has been successful at the same time it's uh, if uh, our students are going for the higher education then also we think our education system is successful so this again as i begin began with that this is very abstract and it depends from perception to perception what we think of this higher order learning but at the end of the day we all will agree with this that this higher order learning is in some form letting the student gain knowledge so the obe is a student centered instruction so in this student centered instruction means here the total focus is on the student and not on the teachers it is not how the teachers are going to do it it is more on how the students will be gaining the knowledge and this outcomes so we have come across the term outcome based education so this outcome will be in terms of the knowledge in terms of the skills skills soft skills technical skills and so on and the attitudes of the students when which they will reflect at the end of their program in their respective career sector so that may be a higher education or that may be anything like a it company or maybe in a government job so when we talk about the accreditations which are concerned now most now all the accreditation accreditations nowadays are outcome based so our nba and nac are all focusing on outcome based accreditation and the focus of this accreditation is how we evaluate the outcomes of our program with specific input and output parameters so uh, if there are any anything you want to talk you want to add on till this point i i welcome all of you to do so or i will proceed with the remaining so this is the obe framework now uh, this is a very simple one and this is i i have taken this reference from an nba uh, presentation that if you see at it so uh, there are two important aspects of the outcome based education the first one is the outcomes what are the outcomes so outcomes are broken down as i mentioned previously from a higher level to a lower level to a micro level so first we have the institute so institute uh, will have their own mission vision and etc from that department will define their mission vision from that there will be the program educational objectives so this relates to a program so a btech program will have a separate program educational objective than a mtech program mca program will be having a separate program educational objective than a bca program so this varies this will not be the same mission vision is also very much particular to a institute to a department similar is the peo but when we talk to the student outcomes that is the program outcomes so the program outcomes are very specific which has been defined by nba and we are nba since nba is our accreditation in india so we that is very specific and that is uniform throughout our nation 
and then the course learning outcomes or in short which are the course mm -hmm. outcomes so this is again specific or very uh, this is uh, in the sense that they are going to be defined by the department who is going to offer the course so the same course say data structures which is being offered by computer science department and what is being offered by the uh, electronics department will be different they will not be the same because the course the program educational objective of the computer science uh, department will be different from the program educational objective of an electronics and communication engineering so we have to look in how this course data structure fits in for the in the program educational objective of the computer science and then how it fits in for the ec so accordingly they have to write the course outcomes it will not be the same for the two departments literally it should not be the same now when we talk about the course uh, learning outcomes then a very important uh, part of it is how we plan the course so planning and the delivery involves like first of all designing the syllabus so if we just look into it it is not the other way around so it is not like Madam, you are muted. Yes, uh, sorry, I was just trying to uh, a note. Anyway, yes, so when we are talking about the uh, syllabus, so if you see that the arrow from the course outcome, so just give me one minute. Yes. So if you just look here, then the course outcome from the course outcome the arrow has gone towards the syllabus and it is not the other way down so usually what i have found out we do the turnaround that is we first devise the syllabus and then we write the course outcome but that should not be the way i will show certain examples where you can understand what i am meaning through this so first, when you are thinking of proposing a course, what we have to go do first is to first we have to devise the course outcome, what the students will learn from this. And then we have to go for the syllabus. After designing the syllabus, generally it is going to be a module by syllabus. And then a for each module, there will be certain teaching methods applicable. So the teaching methods should not be uniform. So for certain uh, modules, the syllabus that, that can be only a chalk and talk, for certain it can be a kind of project-based understanding, for certain it can be some, uh, some um, activity-based learning. So it depends from module to module how we are going to teach our students to gain that knowledge. Then the learning activities which are going to be performed by the students after they are given the proper teaching uh, through the proper teaching methodology when they were gaining the knowledge, we have to evaluate what are their learning activities and finally the assessment of that learning. And once this planning is done, then we go towards the course assessment. So course assessment in the sense that this assessment will be done of the students to assess how far they have understood the course based on the teaching methods what we have applied and for this we are going to apply certain status assessment tools and again this course assessment 
is directly related to the program assessment. So if all the courses of a program has been successfully assessed and the students have been able to learn the courses uh, in, in that desired level, then the program will be assessed. If the programs are assessed from that goes to the institutional assessment, and then there are going to be some gaps maybe where which can be improved and based on that improvement again the outcomes can be redefined so it's a kind of circular process which goes on in the obe framework so when we are talking about the program outcomes now we come to the important fact which is a program outcome so as i mentioned that it has been defined already by the uh, National Board of Accreditation or NBA, which is, in, uh, which is the accreditation board in India. And uh, this is uh, specifically uh, defined by the accreditation agencies of any, any country. So it is uniform. So any engineering college who is, uh, which is in there in India have to follow this program outcomes. They cannot define it on their own. And this program outcomes are also known as graduate attributes because uh, this program outcomes are defined as far what a student will learn at the end of a four year course, if it is an undergraduate, if at the end of a two year course, if it is a postgraduate and so on. And there are 12 statements to it, we are all aware of it. And <clears throat> what are the program outcomes? So why it is known as a graduate out, uh, attributes or why it is known as a program outcome? Because this statements, the 12 statements, which we'll be looking at next are the statements which describes what an engineering graduate is expected to know and whether they will be applied to, whether they will be able to, what they will be able to do upon the end of this program or upon the successful completion of their degree program. So the statements, each of the statements are very important. And it is very important that when we design a course, we understand what is meant by this each statement of the program outcome. So as we are all aware of it, I will not go into the details of this. So the uh, uh, when we write the program outcomes, it is written at the top at the end of the program. So this program outcomes cannot be assessed at the middle of a course or at the middle of a program. It has to be evaluated and it has to be checked whether we have been able to attain this or not at the end of the program. So the engineering graduates will be able to gain engineering knowledge, program analysis, design and development of solutions, conduct investigations of complex programs, our modern tool usage, and engineer and society. Now, there is our demarcation which starts from the statement number six. Usually, most of our core courses, as I belong to the computer science background, uh, it will be more easier for me to relate my uh, computer science courses to this. That say, if we are talking about a operating system course, then an operating system course should relate to the first four points surely. Any core course of any engineering should 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 match to the first four of the program outcomes because a core course is that course which is essential for an engineering graduate of 
that program. So that should match, but it may not match to the engineer and society. That is point number six. It may not point to the seven. It may not point to eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So what I mean by this uh, statement is that it is not necessary that your course should be addressing all the 12 program outcomes. There can be certain course we have values in education, values and ethics in education. That name may differ from curriculum to curriculum, from institute to institute, but definitely we have one course which relates to the values and ethics in profession. So if you just look at the values and ethics in profession, then for the first six points, or maybe the first five statements or the five program outcomes, it is not applicable. But when we go to the six, sixth one, yes, values and education in profession is definitely applicable for the six, may not be to a higher extent, but yes, it is applicable. And it is highly related to the ethics, point number eight, point number nine, or program outcome eight and program outcome nine. So when we are doing this kind of logical thinking, it becomes, so if we don't understand the statements clearly, we will not be able to understand our courses will map to which program outcomes. So it is very it is very important that we have to sit down and we have to understand. It is not very complex, but when we try to relate this, when we try to have a logical inference to it, it becomes a little bit uh, confusing. So that that can be that has to be resolved, and then we can go and design. So next we come to the Bloom's taxonomy, and this is one of the most important thing when we try to understand the concept of attainment, when we try to understand the concept of course outcomes. So the Bloom's taxonomy is basically, it was, a, uh, it was first described in 1956 by the American educational uh, psychologist, Benjamin Bloom, along with his co-authors. Uh, later, it was revised in 2001 by David Crackton and Lauren Anderson, who was one of Bloom's uh, students. So, now, first of all, the question is, what is Bloom's taxonomy and why, why we have uh, thought about this Bloom's taxonomy or why it is so critical in the education sector in outcome-based education. So the uh, objective of Bloom's taxonomy was create the learning outcomes that target uh, not only the subject matter, but also the depth of the learners or the depth of the uh, learners learning, they want students to achieve and then create assessment based on appropriate tools to access or assess how much successful they have been in this process. So it is like providing a common vocabulary to the uh, faculty or the, to the uh, educational, educationalist fraternity to discuss about the various curricular and evaluation programs with greater precision. Now, again, it's a kind of abstraction. We don't know what is precision. So it varies from institution to institution and it varies greatly on how we define the course outcomes. So, because that is the only variable which is in the hands of the department. Program outcome is, no, is, is not in the hands of the department. It cannot be changed. So what can be changed are the course outcomes and then are the assessment process. And Bloom's taxonomy is basically, it is a kind of platform. It is a kind of platform which has given the teachers a kind of same language to 
uh, facilitate the exchange of information about the curricular developments and evaluation devices. And therefore, when we are designing our syllabus or curriculum, we can take help of the other national uh, institutions because we know they are all following the same standard. If it was not being followed, if, it, if the standard, if this, it's a kind of standard which is getting followed throughout our nation, because if this was not the standard, then each institution will be defining in their own way. And then we cannot take the help or we cannot keep it open for the discussion. Therefore, what happened is that uh, when we talk about the, so the, therefore this Bloom's taxonomy became so important and uh, Bloom's taxonomy has three learning domains. So it is one is cognitive, the other one is affective and the last one is psychomotor. But when we are talking about our course outcomes, when we are thinking of designing the course outcomes, we will be, we will be into the cognitive domain. And uh, the different levels of thinking within each domain are hierarchical. We will be just looking at it. So they are hierarchical. So this is a pyramid structure. So if you look at the original one, which was proposed in 1956. So here, the pyramid structure you see, we start from the base. So we start with the base. So first was the knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, evaluation. So this was the six level pyramid structure. No, in 2001, when the revision was done, it was changed that level, the six, it remained six level, but now it became remember, understand, apply, analysis, evaluate, and create. So what is the observation here is that, that when this was revised with a contribution from the cognitive psychologist, um, curriculum theorists, instructional researchers, and testing and assessment specialists. So with their input, when it was revised in 2001, the terminologies or the taxonomy changed from the noun to the verb to indicate, to shift the paradigm from acquisition, acquisition to the active performance of the types of learning. So, so the focus is not on how the acquisition of the learning should be done. Rather, it is shifted with the focus that with whatever has been gained, how that is applied or how that, that, that is going to, how that uh, to assess the evaluation will be on the performance of the students after gaining this knowledge. So therefore the focus shifted from the teacher centric uh, education to the student centric education. So if you just remember the OBE, the first statement which was done was it is a student centered instruction. It is not no longer a teacher centric it became a student-centered instruction. Now, just a brief idea about the learning domains, which I mentioned about the cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. Now, the cognitive domain deals with the gaining of the intellectual skills, such as the critical thinking, problem solving, and creating a knowledge base. Here, the focus, here, the hierarchy, was from memorization. So the first students will the memorize and then slowly as they go up the level from the remember, that is the memorization to the upper level create. So what will happen is going to be some building something new on a previously gained information. So whatever they have learned, whether they can build onto that or not. If we look at the affective, then affective is something dealing with, uh, it is on the, or it focuses on the attitudes, values, interest, and appreciation of the learners. 
so it's kind of a piece of in in affective what is it so it is not directed directly related with the course rather it is directly related to the student that students should be listening they have should should develop their listening uh, uh power so in this uh, domain the hierarchy associated with it begins with receiving and listening to the information and then extending that to characterization or internalization values and acting upon them so it basically focuses on helping learners understand what their own values are and how they have developed so it is more like an internal development of the learner so it is not directly related to any course after they have gone through the program after they have gone through the courses what is their own building inside and we cannot really assess this and when you talk about the psychomotor one so it is more about the ability to learners to physically accomplish task and perform movements and skills so this is more related to the sports and art and this kind of domains they will be they will be having a more focus on the psychomotor domain because they have this kind of skills like physical physical uh, capability and uh, movements and this kind of uh, skills are required in that uh, uh, um, education domains of sports and arts so for an engineering graduate or for the engineering programs what is more applicable is the cognitive domain so what we are looking at the pyramid structure here it is the cognitive part so here this remember understand apply analyze evaluate and create it belongs to the cognitive domain of the bloom's taxonomy so if we go into little more details about what are this different levels because again whenever we are trying to use bloom's taxonomy we need to have a very good understanding of each of these levels if we do not have it then we cannot probably apply it to our courses so the lowest level as i told is the remember level so remember is the recognition and the recalling of the facts after gaining through it then after remembering the student so let's start with an example so for each level let's give an example so i am taking the example of the course um, data structure so say remembering is data in data structures in the remember level students will be remembering the basic uh, definitions and basic working of the linear data structure or any kind of data structure say stack queue link list and so on so this is what they will be understanding the definition they will be understanding the working and so on next is the understand so understand means that why this this fair to this uh, why this data uh, link list needs to be applied or why this check needs to be applied so this understanding so once they remember the definition they will be trying to infer why this thing will be so this is the understanding part next comes the apply so once they understand why link list then they will be knowing given a problem they will be knowing that where to apply this link list in in the problems everywhere we cannot apply link list so where can we apply this so that will come from the apply so after they remember they understand and then they will be able to apply link list the next level is the analyze part so after they have applied the link list to a problem they should be able to analyze once they if they do not analyze they will not know whether link list is the best data structure for that problem or whether any other data structure will be best for that problem so this comes the analysis part so here the breaking down of the information into component parts next comes the evaluate after link list has been applied and analyzed it is the evaluation whether 
something else is going to give me a, a better result or not so by applying the linked list i have i have analyzed it and i have found this is the result can some other data structure give me a better result than this so that is the evaluation part and the last and this is the highest level of thinking which is known as create so we know how linked list works we know we have applied it to this problem can we apply something new can we build on to the linked list and can we find out something new which is going to be a better result than what we have already obtained so if you look at this two points as i mentioned first of all it's a pyramid structure because it looks like a pyramid and in this pyramid the lowest level is the lowest level of thinking and as we move up the pyramid it is a higher level of higher level of thinking so our aim is to make the students go from the lower level of this pyramid to the higher level of this pyramid but as we know that the the planning the planning and the teaching methodology should aim from going from the down to the up but yes we know that this higher levels of the pyramid cannot be ascertained for 100% of the students in a class though that is the ideal that is the thing we always aim for but we know that this is not possible so our our target most of the institutions target is to go till the fourth level so there are each level so this is blue this is bt level 1 this is bt level 2 this is bt level 3 bt level 4 bt level 5 and bt level 6 so this bt levels go on in this manner now we have looked at the bloom's taxonomy now we have to look at the different verbs so as i told that when we moved from 1956 to 2001 that is from the bloom's taxonomy to the revised bloom's taxonomy we shifted our focus from the noun to the verbs so now these are some of the verbs which have been proposed under each of the bloom's uh, uh, bt levels and ideally ideally our course outcomes should be following this uh, verbs so when we are trying to define our course outcomes we ideally we should be following these verbs while uh, defining now again um there is a, a few points which we need to know regarding this the first point is that uh, this are not this is not just give me one minute now first of all this verbs now uh, um there are um, uh, different um, reputed institutions who have studied who have uh, studied this and who have came out with this um, uh, uh, taxonomy words so uh if you look at the if you look at it then uh, maybe there are some words some other institutions may be proposing some other words and so on so uh, what you can observe here is that there are certain words which are 
in a uh, two uh, uh, different uh, level uh, so for example if i uh, just uh, tell one so can you find any words here which are like multi level multi level uh, uh, words can you see here anybody so let's try to make it little uh, interactive otherwise it's very boring that i will be speaking 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 so any questions from your side anything on your side also you can contribute so anybody can find out any word which is multi level which is which is repeating can you see anything like that anybody um um excuse me acha can can the um, speakers be or the participants can, can they be unmuted by anything i think uh, they don't have the permission to unmute maybe Uh, anybody on the side of the organizers will it be possible to uh, let the uh, um, speakers or the participants unmute themselves madam they are un unable they are able to unmute themselves or oh, they are able to unmute themselves okay fine 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 thank you thank you so uh, uh, anybody can you can you find out some words which are like i may be Yes. So, can I? Will it? Is it? Uh, can you see some words which are in multiple levels? Because uh, then it will be easier for me to explain why they are in multiple levels. Okay. I think uh, I should answer this. That. see i can say two words one word is estimating so if you just look at hello madam yes yes ha uh, madam uh, actually this uh, this is uh, also one of my questions this is uh, the uh, yeah. one uh, actually one thing then uh, different level uh, this is my question actually yes okay. uh, see this is a, a very important thing to understand um see if i look at the verb estimating you can see that estimating is in the bt level 2 which is understanding and estimating is also there in uh, i think in uh, bt level ma'am this is the analyzing and the la uh, second last ma'am analyzing second last second last in in analyzing also estimating right so you see when we talk about the understanding level uh, estimating here the estimate is not for example let me give you an example um say we are trying to find out the complexity of a of a uh, prop of an algorithm now when we are at the understanding level what we are going to do here is that we are going to estimate the complexity of a known problem in a sense that let's say we are trying to find out the complexity of a binary search now binary search algorithm is a very common algorithm and in the binary search we know how to find out the complexity using the tree method or the recurrence tree method so when we are trying to when we are trying to understand it we will be taking our common problem and we will be estimating what is the complexity of that it's a known problem when we go to the analyze level then here the problem becomes unknown the problem is not known and here it is a problem where we have applied bst where we have applied the binary search method 
and now we are trying to find out we have written a prop work algorithm for that unknown problem so we have to understand it goes in the hierarchical method we have started with the binary search method so i'm giving the example of binary search tree so we have started with bst we have read the definition of bst we have read how it works bst how it works we have find out how the complexity how to find out the complexity of it now we have an unknown problem where we have applied we thought that bst is applicable we have applied it now we are going to the analyze part where we do not know what is the algorithm we what is the going to be the algorithm of the new problem we don't know we have applied bst and applying bst we have written a new algorithm for that unknown problem now we are estimating using the concept of using the concept of bst what is the complexity we are trying to estimate what is the complexity of this new problem so see when we are in when we are in the understanding level here we are estimating the complexity of a known problem when we move on to the analyze that is bt level 4 we are estimating the complexity of a new problem which involves bst so therefore is it clear is it clear what i want to tell Um, yes, is it, yeah. and also experimenting. So experimenting is also same. So if we look at the experimenting, then experimenting is in the BT level three, and also it is in the BT level five. So when when we are applying, so if we take the example of BST only, then in the BT level three we are implementing bst we are simply writing a code and we are implementing bst when in the evaluation space we are doing experimenting that means we are using the concept of bst in evaluation phase in evaluating the new problem writing the code for the new problem uh, I think somebody is unmute. Is uh, unmute? Can you please mute yourself? Thank you. Thank you so much. So in the BT level five, when we are talking about the experimenting, then here how we are going to implement BST for the new problem. So therefore, there are certain certain keywords or certain verbs which are multi-level but when they are in the when in different levels they have a different meaning so this is a place where this understanding has to come into picture <coughs> excuse me so once we come to the course uh, this bloom's taxonomy now we are ready to define what is a course outcome so course outcome it is a specific and a measurable statement. So when I talk about measurable, that means it has to it it has a quantitative measure attached to it. So it has to be quantitatively assessed. It's not qualitative assessment. It's a quantitative as assessment where there will be certain numerical values. So these are the specific and the measurable statements that define the knowledge, skills, and attitudes learners will demonstrate by the completion of a course. So we were at the program outcome where we are concerned about the total outcome of a program, which is which which spans over a duration of years. Then we came down to each course of a curriculum and as you can see it belongs to the cognitive domain where we are concerned about the knowledge and ability and the skills of a learners 
what they will be able to demonstrate by the end of any particular course. So, course outcomes needs to be defined for each and every course in the curriculum. So, even if you have a seminar, or if you have a group discussion as part of your curriculum, that should also have a course outcome because that is a course. If it is a credit course, that is if the credit, if, if that evaluation result will be added to the credit score of a student at the end of a semester, then that should have a course outcome. Typically, this course outcome should be between three to six, but uh, generally it should be five to six. Can you tell me why this course outcome should be five to six? The reason is that if you look at the Bloom's level, there are five, six levels of Bloom's taxonomy, right? So your course, ideally, the course which you are trying to offer, at least the core courses should cater to all the six levels of the Bloom's taxonomy, should, ideally. So therefore, typically, that value should be between five to six, but in some cases, there can be certain subjects for which we cannot have this level of create, we can or may not have that uh, level of evaluate. So in that case or analyze, so in that case, that can be three to six. Therefore, this variation is between three to six. But ideally, the code says should cater to all the six levels of the Bloom's taxonomy. And, you know, this is a skill. It, it's, it's a kind of skill, how to define the course outcomes. Most of us do not have that understanding. There are two parts of uh, defining a course outcome. The first one is the verb. One minute, please. So typically it consists of two parts, the verb. So this verb will be from the Bloom's level. So that is the intended cognitive process which indicates that uh, what the learners is intended to do. The second part is the object, which indicates the knowledge which the students are expected to acquire or construct. So each course outcome of each courses should involve these two parts, the verb and the objective. So, now, uh, let me show you an example uh, of uh, uh, the data structure codes. Let us take two examples of the codes outcomes. So the first one, uh, this is example one, where the first of, uh, outcome is to understand the properties of various data structures. So if you see understand, understand belongs to the Bloom's taxonomy two. Then identify the strengths and weaknesses of different data structures. Design and employ appropriate data structures for solving computing problems, analyze and compare the efficiency of algorithms and solve computing problems independently. So here, the one observation is that Generally, when we write course outcomes, we should not use multiple verbs. We should use a single verb. The reason is that if we involve multiple verbs from multiple uh, levels, then 
so basically each course outcome should have a work from one level not from multiple levels the reason is very simple that if you are defining like that then it is possible that you understand the concept but you may not be able to apply so apply and understand belong to two different levels of the bloom's taxonomy so you can understand but you may not apply so you are fulfilling one level but you are not fulfilling that other other work so the common concept is that no in, in each statement in each outcome we should not involve multiple level words so this is one example of writing the course outcome this is a second example so i'm not just i'm not reading through it but my question so here is my first question to you which one do you think according to you is a better course outcome of the course data structure subject is same data structures syllabus cannot vary invariantly across the institutions it is more or less the same so this is the example two course outcome of a sub of the course data structures and this is the example our course outcome of the course data structure so according to you which is the better which do you think is the better course outcome written so i leave it to the uh, forum uh, i expect an answer for this I think the first one. Okay, Doctor uh, Swami Nathan sir is telling the first one. Ah, uh, anybody else would like to uh, uh, comment? Ah, uh, Swami Nathan sir. can you please elaborate like why do you think the first one is better on uh, the first one they are having different room structure on a level madam here the ability will repeat a second one <coughs> ability is repeated okay okay uh, anything uh, else sir, you want to add on to it nothing but that one i see the difference okay Thank you, sir, so much. Anybody else would like to would like to add on to it? See, this is as I told you. This is a very this topic is uh, is a topic which needs discussion. Until and unless we discuss elaborately, our our understanding will not be clear. So, uh, what Swami Nathan sir told. what i am going to tell will be two different things i will just tell you within a, a five minutes but if anybody else has anything else to comment on this naan inge le ache yes yes the question is that yes ma'am uh, the question is that this is the course outcome so why i am showing you the outcome and not the syllabus because if you remember the ob framework then first the course outcome needs to be defined then the syllabus has to be framed so this is an example of a uh, example course outcome of a course data structures this is example 1 and this is example 2 my question is that which do you think is a better course outcome which course outcome has been written uh, in a better way that is that was my question so swami nathan sir told this is a better one because here the bloom's taxonomy uh, words has been properly used while in this case the ability word has been written too many times so that was here his uh, input uh okay himachand sir is telling the second one 
So, sir, can you can you please elaborate why uh, anybody yeah, or Vijay Lakshmi, ma'am, if you can elaborate, why do you think it is the uh, uh, second one is better according to you? Okay, so I uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, for participating. See, uh, first one, the first one is a better course outcome. Is it's written in a better way? But I will differ from what the point which Swami Nathan sir have told. If I go to uh, Sir's point of view, then this ability, actually, when we write the course outcomes, we, uh, in most of the places, the, the course outcomes begins like this. At the end of this course, the students will be able to choose appropriate data structures to analyze the time. It begins with that. So this word ability actually is part of the course outcome. So ability is not the problem here. The problem is that by looking at this, uh, Swami Nathan sir, am I clear? Ability is part of the course outcome. So it's written like at the end of the course, the students will be able to, it's a statement. Then the course outcomes generally began, begins. But the problem is that by looking at this example course outcomes, can you guess the syllabus of this? Yes or no? You can guess, right? What is the syllabus of this uh, of this particular data structure course? <coughs> yes, right? So you know that uh, what are the data structure, then you can know that that, uh, that, that uh, data structure course will have the time and complexity analysis part then they will have a sorting and pattern matching part and then about trees and so on. So, <coughs> excuse me, as I told that it is first for this particular example, the syllabus has been written first and then the course outcome has been written. So first we have thought that what will be the syllabus and then we have written the course outcome. But if you look at this example, it is not possible. It is a very general statement. It is not possible for us to guess what is the uh, syllabus for this particular course. So this course has this syllabus. If you can, if you just look at it, you see it is having all the components as is given in the course outcome of the example two. But by looking simply at the course outcomes, you cannot guess what is there in the syllabus of this. So this is the right way of doing it. You first think what is your course outcome, what you want your students to learn at the end of the course, and then accordingly you design the syllabus. And one more difference is that there are two things when we write the curriculum, the first thing we write the course objective for a course. The second is we write the course outcome of a course. So there are two terminologies, course objective and course outcome. What is written here, it is actually not the outcome, but it is the course objective. Course objective means the student, the teachers will be specifically mentioning what they want their students to learn, specific. So I want my students to learn about the appropriate data structures. I want my students to learn about the time and space complexity. I want my students to know the implementation of the sorting and pattern matching, specific. So the teachers are specifying. Course outcomes can never be specific. Course outcomes means it's a general, it's an overall uh, outcome of a given course. So that cannot be specific. And this is where, unfortunately, most of us go wrong. We, most of us, if you just look at the internet 
nowadays and it's because the, all the syllabus is right. available of all the yeah. institutions departments in the internet nowadays if you just look that in 90% of the colleges and 90% of the departments have put their mm -hmm. course outcomes have defined their course outcomes in this manner and why i am emphasizing on it and why i am emphasizing on this is that because when we drive this is the first step if we write the course outcome of a course wrongly then the attainment process also becomes strong and therefore as per my knowledge most of the nba experts who come for evaluation of the uh, accreditation they strongly most of the cases they have many questions on the attainment part because their first focus is on the course outcome definition and most of us go wrong on this and because of that the whole attainment process uh, gets derailed in a sense so what we need to understand clearly is that when we are writing the outcome outcome cannot be specific it has to use the taxonomies oh, of the good. bloom level but when we are defining the course objectives there is no hard and fast rule for that here the teachers are free to define specifically what they want their learners to learn so i hope this is this is very much clear because if this is not clear then we cannot go and do that attainment so attainment deformation everything comes from this basic understanding i think i think this is uh, uh, this is clear to all if any questions if you have any doubts you you may uh, you may comment or if you have something to add on to it discuss or maybe i have a, as i told i have this perception if somebody else have some other perception we are free to discuss on that because it's it's a it's a a uh, very beautiful topic which needs to be explored and explored hello excuse me madam this is dr p hem chandu yes sir hello yes sir yes sir, i can hear you uh, i wonder uh, madam can you able to explain clearly about the Uh, course objectives and uh, course outcomes sir uh, most yes, probably sir. generally course yeah. objectives generally course objectives will be done uh, first of all we will decide course objectives and later yes. just we will remove the remove the first letter and then we have done, we will conclude that uh, yes these things will be done in the course outcomes no sir the same is, the sir. same lines will be yes that is the wrong thing sir mm. the thing is that if uh, you so, just if you just look at this example course objective are very specific like i want my students to learn about the linear data structures i i want my students to learn about the so you belong to the csc background no madam electrical background electrical. you belong to the electric so you can take up any course like if we talk about the circuit theory maybe maybe so if if you can just tell me what are the course objectives of your course if you can just tell me that so i it will be easier for me to explain on that line for you uh, no problem I, i can understand this data structures also madam okay okay sorry mm -hmm. then uh, then if you think if i think about the data structures then data structures are uh, important so if you just look at the syllabus let us uh, take this example of the syllabus so see there are five modules to it okay so now when we think that in module 1 i want my students to because data structure syllabus as i told is uniform it cannot change it cannot vary uh, so much from institution to institution or department to department so in the first first uh, module generally we have yeah. what is the data structure what are the different types of data structure what are the asymptotic notations and so on so the objective should be to make the students aware of the different data structures available 
what is the use of a data structure then what are the what is the concept behind the asymptotic notations and this is very specific but when we are writing the course outcome we cannot make it specific like we want our students to know about the complexity we want our students to know about the different data structures no we are going to write that the at the end of the course the students will be able to understand the concept of data structure and complexity just one line statement course outcomes cannot be more than one line it has to be typically one line maybe one and a half lines but you can have a course objective which is a two line so course objective is very specific but course outcome can never be specific because the reason is very simple if you just look at this bloom's taxonomy then you cannot tell na the say for example i tell the first statement to be i uh, to uh, let us take this works to um, maybe uh, understand the concept of linear data structures uh, uh, stack q array and then when i go to the next one for the bst or for the tree i cannot tell not to apply so when you make it module wise when you make it topic wise otherwise you have to write in the same line to understand the concept of array link list uh, or the linear data structure non linear data structure graph hashing everything you have to write in the same line possible for us to write so course objective has to be specific topic what the teachers want uh, what i want my students to learn but when you talk about the course outcome it has to be general you have to keep in mind the total syllabus from this course at the end of this course what the students will understand remember what the students will understand what they will be able to apply what they will be able to analyze and so on so is it clear sir yeah madam yeah madam thank you so now we will be moving on so uh, i i thank i thank to all the participants that they are participating actively um otherwise uh, this session will be very boring so now we come to the co po mapping so that's why i started with the po then i moved on to the co now i am coming to the co po mapping because if we want to assess that how much what is the outcome of a course in a quantitative manner we have to know these things otherwise we cannot do that so this course copo mapping it is also known as a course articulation matrix it is typically a multi dimensional array kind of thing of cos and pos i will be just showing an example and it is maps the correlation level in terms of three three in terms of three levels the first one indicates uh, the high mapping or substantial mapping and marked with 3 then moderate or medium mapping marked with 2 and then low mapping marked with 1 and here we should remember that each co should be mapping at least one po and one pso so this pso as i mentioned it is a program specific objective each program will be having a separate program specific pso and each department is free to define it as per their convenience as per their standard and this pso will be defined by keeping in mind the mission and vision of the institute and the mission and vision of the department so by taking this two parameters and by getting feedbacks from the different stakeholders pso's will be defined so what 
since we are here concerned we are we are focusing on co pa mapping so i am not uh, i am not highlighting this pa so much it is more or less the mapping will be same only there is nothing different so each co of a course should map at least one po and one pso this is mandate you has to be done but now i come to an example if you see so this is a, a data structure um, uh, so because i am moving uh, with the data structure example and it is a very common subject of which most of the circuit branches usually studied apart from cscit so uh, all of you are aware of this subject so i have taken up this example so if you just look at this um, i will just increase it yes now we know the 12 so we know the 12 so i will request you to omit this part the pso of a department is typically between 2 to 4 2 to 4 uh, minimum it should be 2 and then maximum it is generally kept 3 or 4 so we just neglect that part, concentrate on the 12 POs because that is a uh, program specific objective. We, we cannot uh, comment on it, but the 12 POs, which are common for all the engineering institutes. So you see, this is a, a CEO uh, of a particular uh, college. Um, uh, there are five CEOs which are defined. And uh, this CEO is not good, not bad. I cannot tell it is a very good CEO. I cannot tell it is also a bad CEO in the sense that if you look at the first one, uh, the first CEO one, and if you look at CEO five, it is general. It is a general thing. But if you look at the middle three CEOs, they are specifically relating to the modules of yeah. the syllabus. So by looking at it, you can know that these are included in the, as I told you, as I was telling the Swaminathan sir that, uh, no, I think uh, the sir who, who just talked to me. So, uh, so uh, you see that here, as I was explaining, you have to write everything. So you see CO2, concept of recursion and implement various data structures like stack, queue, list, tree, and so on. They have written it like that. So this is not actually a good course outcome you cannot specify like that it is not a good course outcome so those co1 and co5 is considerable but the middle three co's are not uh, good so it's a mix and match the second point which you can observe is that they have written here these are the bt levels so bt level uh, k1 indicates bt level 1 2 uh, then this is 2 3 Three, four, five, six. Now, as I told you, course outcome should typically include a dwarf from each BT level. So you cannot have a multi level, uh, you cannot have multi level level words associated with a CO. The second point is that. Add understand the complexity of algorithms by describing various data structures cannot cannot possibly be a course outcome because which one you want your students to know whether you want them to understand the complexity or you want them to under describe the various data structures because literally you should make your students understand the concept of the data structures various data structures so this ceo if you if you just understand the inference which i'm trying to give the ceo is not properly written it is it is not correctly written then you come to the copo mapping so this is the matrix what i was yeah, talking about it's a multi-dimensional uh, it's it's actually n cross 12, where n indicates the number of COs of any course, and then into 12 means the 12 COs. But if you look at, this is again not a good mapping. Why it is not a good mapping? Because we are talking about the data structure. 
Now, how do you think data structure would relate to PO6 engineer and the society? So you just look at this mapping. So you see three indicates a high mapping. That means this, so if you have the program outcomes uh, with you, it will be easier for you to understand that Just give me two minutes. I will just keep it with me also. So if you just have the program outcomes with you, CO1 is understand the concept of complexity of algorithms by describing various data structures and dot, dot, dot. So engineering knowledge, yes, engineering knowledge, it relates highly. So it is three. Then the problem analysis. Yes, problem analysis, the complexity problems, it also highly relates three. Then you come to PO3, which is design and development of solutions. Okay. Now, representations in memory, they have given. Uh, though it is not directly related, you cannot map it, but they have given two. Okay, understandable. Conduct investigation of complex problems. Now, this does not relate at all. They have given two. But how do you think by understanding and describing how they will be able to, uh, uh, because if you look at PO4, it is use research-based knowledge and research methods including design of experiments, analysis, and interpretation of data. So regarding the interpretation of data, maybe the representations and memory will go, but it cannot be two. It has to be one. PO5 is model tool usage. Create, select, and apply appropriate techniques, resources, and modern engineering tools. So no way PO1 can relate to PO5. No way it can relate. Engineer and society, no, it cannot apply. Environment and sustainability, PO7, it cannot apply. Ethics, PO8, no way it can apply. So you see, literally, what they have done is that they have mapped the CEOs to all the POs by 3, 2, 1. So I come to the question, I see somebody have asked a question like, is it possible to what indication zero in uh, mapping? Yes, we cannot give zero, we put a dash. If it is not mapping, we put a dash. So CO1 should have literally mapped to PO6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 as a dash. Okay, it should have been a dash. PO12, generally matches to the project, internship, and so on, which are lifelong learning. So when you do a project, you do, you apply certain kind of knowledge and that is involves your lifelong learning. Okay. So, yes, anybody? Uh, Janani, ma'am, do you want to say anything? <laughs> Can you please mute yourself? Okay. Sorry for muting you. So, pa participant are requested to mute yourself. Participant are requested to mute yourself. Mute all for it. No, no, no. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. Corbin, uh, Karun, uh, it's, it, it's, it's a very good section where the participants can speak and they can.
Anubrata, uh, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I will request not to uh, uh, mute the participants. Uh, let them have the option of unmuting themselves. Yes, uh, yes. Because many people are contributing and it's, it's, yes, uh, it's a good session. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. So, what I want to tell is that. Uh, you should we should remember that our CEOs should not map to all the peers. It's not necessary. It's not necessary at all. But whenever we are putting a mapping, it should be some way correct because again, it's an abstract concept. What is correct for you may not be correct for me. What is your understanding may not be uh, true for me. I may think that data structures CEO is not applicable to the society. But now we are talking about the CEO. So we are not talking about the total code. So data structure may be applicable for the engineer and society, but CO1 may not be applicable for the engineer and society. Okay. So therefore, what I want to tell is that whenever we are doing this mapping, this mapping has to be very, very minutely done and very carefully done with the proper understanding of the CEO and the PO. And therefore, it is very important to write the COs correctly. If we don't write the COs correctly, that is the first step, then mapping will be anywhere wrong. Next step is the understanding and making this mapping correctly because from this mapping directly the attainment part comes. So you need not go and map all the subjects to all the POs. That craving we need not do. We can, we as I gave you a kind of a uh, little bit, you can say as a thumb rule that the core courses generally map to all the five initial four POs definitely. Some may apply to the fifth one, that is the model tool usage. And the project, internship, group discussion, seminars, it will be mapping to the higher POs. Your elective subjects, which you are offering, for better electives are generally some for better understanding or better that are not the core courses that you are get, giving to the students for something different, especially the open electives. So that you can map to the higher ones. So this is a kind of general concept which goes on and then you have to uh, revise on it. <coughs> now, uh, this is a COPO mapping example, which is two. So this I have also taken. So you can see that here also this uh, um, uh, COs are not exactly correctly written because you in CO3, you can see that it has written understand. So understand the concept of nonlinear data structures and applications except CO3 you can tell that the other CEOs are almost perfectly written. And if you look at the mapping here, so I have taken that mapping with the 12 POs only, you see here also the POs has been correctly mapped in the sense they haven't mapped to everything. But when you look at the CO4 mapping, so in the CO4, you see analyze the efficiency of algorithms. They have mapped to the PO8, which is ethics. Ethics, it will no law means no way ethics can map to data structures. So even if it is the one, it is wrong. And to the person who was asking that whether we can put a zero, generally we don't put a zero, we put a dash. That means indicates no mapping. And it is very perfect. There is no wrong in it. You need not map to everything. And then what has to be highlighted is this portion, which is the average section. So generally, this average is what the average of the CEOs mapping to a single PO is taken for the attainment purpose. And this is typically calculated using the uh, summation of the 
co snapping divided by the number of snappings so if you just look at the first one and again this is a little bit debatable how this um, this average is calculated in some places you may see that in some institutions some follow that we take the highest level mapping so here it is 2 2 2 and 3 so the average will be 3 so whichever is the highest level they will go with that so like here is 1 and 2 so this will be typically 2 so whole numbers they take in some places it is followed like how many have been achieved divided by the number of mappings so 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 by 4 <coughs> Well, in some places, it is taken as, so, so if we look at this, this uh, in some places, this will be like the value will be 2 plus 2 plus, so I'm talking about this, 3 divided by 3, because it is not mapping to PO4, CO1 has not mapped to PO4, what has mapped? CO2, 3 and 4, so 3, so 2 plus 2 plus 3 by 3, which should have been 2.33. What this particular uh, institution have followed, they have taken the average over the total number of COs, whether they are mapping or not, it is, it is not uh, thought about. Uh, please excuse me for one minute. Okay, ma'am. No issue. So in here, if you see, they have taken the average over all the COs, whether it has mapped or not. So like for this example, it is 2 plus 2 plus 3 by 4. If you do by 4, it will become 1.75. So again, this is a debatable one. It depends on the institution, like which institution is going to follow which, uh, which way of defining this average. And again, based on the defining of the average, the attainment value changes. The second point is that it is institution dependent. So in an institute, generally the departments do not follow different standards. So institution will fix our attainment process. There will be a program coordinator for that. The program coordinator will be taking care of this and it will be passed through proper boards. That is the proper uh, academic councils or uh, respective to the institutions, whatever is the authorizing committee. The, it will be passing through that and that will be uniformly followed throughout the institution, irrespective of the department. So this is a kind of debatable one. Now we come to the concept of attainment. So now we are in a position to attain. What is attainment? Attainment is a quantitative measure towards accomplishment of desired goals. So we have set our program outcome. So program outcome is typically a goal which has been set or uh, for the students at the end of the graduating course. We have set the course outcomes, which is typically the goal which has been set for the students at the end of a particular course. And now we are checking that whether we are trying to quantitatively measure whether we have been able to accomplish our outcomes, whether we have been able to accomplish our desired goals. And this is typically done through a continuous assessment process. 
it is not a one time assessment like we take an exam at the end of a semester and we we try to find out whether the students have done good or not no it's not like that so we throughout a semester we evaluate the students we assess the students on different using different methods using different tools to find out whether they are their learning has been to the mark what we are expecting them to do and since it is a very much so why this attainment thing has came into picture that since it is a very abstract terminology that what what the students have learned so it it varies from perception to perception from student from person to person so i as a teacher may feel that my students have been able to learn this much another they come and evaluate and tell no your students don't know this so you your your students have not learned it so it's a very debatable one relative it's a theory of relativity so to confirm from the teacher's point of view yes my students have been able to learn what i intended them to learn so a standard is fixed so that standard is based on this values this average what has been done and at the end i assess that yes my result my attainment value is this and therefore i can tell that yes my students have been able to learn what i have wanted them to learn so therefore there is a target value and there is attainment value and if our attainment value is crossing the target level then we tell yes if it is not then we tell no and then we find out the gaps and we try to mend it so i am not going to go into this details because i believe that these are topics of your subject someone is writing something on the screen okay so i believe this are part of your subsequent ftp so now what i am going to concentrate is that how i will stop before the attainment part so there are two types of attainment calculations so attainments are calculated using two assessment tools one is a direct assessment and the other one is indirect assessment so in the direct attainment so in this part what is actually are uh, displayed is a student's knowledge and skills are evaluated using their performance and this performances are typically evaluated using different assessment instruments direct attainment is basically it provides a sampling of what the students know and and can provide a strong evidence of how much they have learned so this uh, direct attainment uh, has two parts one is the continuous internal evaluation part which is a cie okay one point i need to mention here that this direct and indirect attainment calculation out of this most of the institutions uh, it differs that how much the institutions will take in but typically for the attainment calculation 80% is taken from the direct atten at attainment and 20% is taken from the indirect attainment the reason is very simple for the direct attainment as we i i mentioned that it is a display of a student's skill ability what has been taught from that so it's a directly it is it is it is an assessment of the curriculum or the course curriculum syllabus what they are learning when indirect is not related to the curriculum indirect attainment relates to something else which i will come to in a later stage so therefore most of the weightage is given to the direct attainment almost 80% in most of the cases and 20% is given to the indirect assess attainment so this direct attainment also has two assessment components one ma'am sorry to disturb you Inter interrupt you madam yes sir definitely madam, sir. 
madam in zero pure mapping for any one particular zero how yeah. many pos it can be matched madam and how that grading will be given madam that 3 3 2 2 1 so on so no sir there is first of all no fixed rule how many pos it can match there is nothing like that there is a minimum the minimum level is one at least it should match to one there is no upper limit to it first thing second thing is that this as i told it is very abstract we don't know for you what may be a three what you think may be a high mapping may be a low mapping for you but typically for the core courses it maps the the cos map highly or mediumly to the lower pos like po 1 2 3 4 4 and it may map okay. lowly that is one maybe one or two to the higher pos generally it does not match as i as i gave you the example because none of the cos of your data structure course can map to the ethics it is not possible right but if you can okay. if you can understand like co5 real world problem you can tell okay when you are applying an algorithm to a real world problem so maybe there are some ethical thing has to come into picture but if you look at the uh, program outcome statement of uh, the po8 you see it is apply ethical principles and commit to professional ethics but data structure doesn't have any course outcome like that which directs to the professional ethics right so data structure can yes, no yes, way can no way map to po8 none of the cos can map to of data structure can map to po8 however if you are teaching or if you are designing the uh, co po matriculation matrix for the values and ethics in profession then definitely one of the co will have a 3 or all the cos will have a 3 in that po8 is it is it clear sir so depends on the course and it depends on the definitely depends on the course which course you are trying to design the outcome for and accordingly you have to think how you can map Yes, and also yes. for each and every, and also for the same subject, if the yes. different faculties is uh, handling, their uh, CO PO mapping may be changed in no manner. No, 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 sir, no, sir. Oh. For a particular program, for a particular department, there will be a single course. The course is single only, not data structure. Say, for example, for second year CAC of any college. Second year CAC, there are three sections. These three sections are being handled by three different faculties. But the course is same, the syllabus is same because the three sections are going to study the same syllabus. So if the syllabus is same, then the course outcome, the course objective, the COP or mapping, all will be same. The teachers have to. Devise their teaching methodology in such a way so that the course outcomes can be made. In the sense that at the end of the teaching, the student should be able to learn what has they have thought about that they should learn this. How they will be evaluating that through the assessment method by calculating the attendance. Is it okay, sir? Ah oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. That means you are saying that zero uh, pure mapping will not be changed for even though different faculties has handled the same subject, right? No, no, definitely not. Zero pure course outcome, course objective, and the zero pure mapping is fixed when the curriculum has been designed. During okay. the ongoing curriculum session, your zero pure mapping cannot change, course outcome cannot change, course objective cannot change. Only when you revise the curriculum, then only it will be changing. But your syllabus may change. Please note it. Your syllabus may change according to the changing uh, environment and according to the changing industry requirements. But your no. syllabus, as I told, your syllabus from the syllabus you do not design the course outcome. From the course outcome you design the syllabus. So it is the other yes, way. Yes. So yes, your syllabus but, uh, may change. But course outcome will never change until and unless you revise your curriculum completely. 
yes matter, but i am talking about the mapping on mapping map when two no, two mapping, or three different faculties no 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 it will never change because it is not dependent on the faculty it is independent of the faculty okay your how, okay. your cob or mapping is not dependent on the faculty na right? it, it is dependent on what is your course outcome your course outcome is yes, not yes. dependent on your syllabus so it is independent yes, yes, of the faculty it will never change yes ma'am now i am clear ma'am thank you okay sir so this was the direct assessment components and here we are having two assessments one is the continuous internal evaluation which is also known as cie and the semester end examinations which is the see and the and the weightage which is given in these two cases is again it varies it is now 20 is to 80 or 30 is to 70 or 40 is to 60 typically for theory exams most of the institutions are following 30 is to 70 that is 30 marks comes from the continuous evaluation and 70 marks comes from the semester examinations and for the laboratories we are following 40 60 that is 40 is coming from the internal one and the uh, 60 is coming from the semester end examination so more or less i think the institutions follow the same principle so the semester end theory of the laboratory examinations are having questions and that question should be catering to all levels of the bt level so generally what is the, uh, what, what is indicated or what is desired is that there will be more questions from the lower level bt levels to cater to all the students and there will be certain uh, maybe a 10 or 20% of the question should be from the higher level bts that is 4 5 6 6 so that the students who are really good at comprehending i'm not talking about the good or bad students i am i cannot distinguish but students who are able to comprehend better who have a better analyzing power who have a better critical thinking power those students will be only answering the bt level 4 5 6 6. but at the same time you have to ensure your question paper in such a way so that all the students will be able to answer 70 if it is a 30 70 concept then all the students should be able to answer 70 marks they have to answer 70 marks your question paper should be mapped such a way so that all the students will be able to answer 70 marks question however there will be at least 20% questions from higher bt levels so that it cater to the students who have a better critical thinking power so all the assessment techniques what we are going to use will be tacked to the relevant cios and a determination of the students performance to all the assessment items related to that particular cio so when we are calculating the cio po attainment we have to take a cio all the questions will be mapped to the cos when we are calculating the attainment of co1 we have to look take all the questions from the various assessment techniques which have mapped which were mapped to co1 and we have to calculate the attainment so this is how the concept goes so this continuous internal evaluation is done by the department so it is conducted and evaluated by the department and again i come to the thing that even if a subject a course is being taken handled by three different uh, faculties for three different sections or or two different faculties for two different sections this evaluation technique and the conduction of the assessment will not change it will be uniform it has to be uniformly decided by the department and it cannot be ad hoc 
it has to be passed through proper channel in the sense that there will be a, a departmental academic committee where it will be discussed what is going to be the CIE process. And then the CIE process, in fact, as I told, it has to be decided by the institution. The departments also cannot follow ad hoc techniques for this. Generally, they should not follow. Because since the attainment technique is same, how we are going to calculate it. So generally a uniformity is man maintained throughout the institution so that any department will be facing, will be doing the same thing and it will be a kind of standard. Otherwise, if it is done by the department to department, then it becomes very, uh, very ad hoc kind of thing. But these are all not thumb rules. It depends, it depends, it varies how the institution authority is going to take care of it. So it is conducted and evaluated. And also there is one more important thing here. It is, uh, it is, going, it is dictated by the university norms. So if the university have certain kind of norms, like most of the uh, institutions uh, in the assessment, they have at least uh, two, two internal tests going. So that is the standard or that is the norm set by the university. So it has to be followed. We cannot help it. So this assessment tools can be like unit test. It can be assignment. It can be MCQs. It can be project. And whatever is the assessment tool, all the questions, should be mapped to the appropriate CO and BT level. So I will be giving an example. I will be showing an example where, uh, so that it gives a better understanding of that. So each question should be mapped to the appropriate CO and BT level. The thing is that for the appropriate CO, it is very important because as I mentioned, when you are calculating the attainment, you have to take the questions which map to a particular CO and you have to calculate the attainment. So it is a mandate, it has to be done. Now, what is the purpose of the CI? Now, what is why this continuous assessment or the continuous internal evaluation? So basically, when you are evaluating a student throughout a semester, then it will give the student an encouragement to progress continuously in the semester, leading to a better understanding of the course. So if he fails in the first one, he will try to improve in the second one. So this is how it is planned. So that a student, if he starts from a zero, he goes to a hundred at the end of the course. That is how the graph should be in upward direction. It also allows the teachers to evaluate the performance of the students in accordance with the course objective. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, course objective is set by the teachers. So, the teachers will define what they specifically want their students to learn. So, this allows the teachers also to evaluate that whether what objective they have set is met or not. Moreover, it also enhances the abilities and the skills of a student. So a student who has gaining, who is, who is able to gain this knowledge or the ability, they can participate also in some kind of contest where they will be using the concept of say data structures. So it's a it's a enhancement of their abilities, and this distributes the evaluation throughout the it 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 actually do not bog down the evaluation process by only a question paper at the end of the semester. So this is anyway not done, and this is more critically followed in open outcome-based education system. This process relates completely to the outcome-based education system. So what are the CIE? What can be the possible CIE assessment tools? So the CIE assessment tools, you can have a surprise test you may conduct. Um, now this, this depends on the uh, faculties, but faculties may be conducting a su surprise test. There can be open book test. There can be assignments, tutorials, mini projects. 
periodical quizzes, laboratory work, group discussion, and so on. Now, I have given you just an example. So this is what has been followed. Uh, uh, what can be followed is for the direct attainment. So the assessment test can be, tool can be a class test, that is the unit test, which is conducted twice a semester. There can be an assignment which is given at twice a semester. There can be a quiz once in a semester. Attendance, fiber voice, laboratory performance, these are all continuous process because you cannot gauge it in a single day. It has to be throughout the semester and the semester end examination. But here, one point is which I feel is very important is that if you look at the attendance, viva, and so on, you cannot map it to any uh, POs, first of all. You cannot map it to any Bloom's taxonomy as such. And since they don't have a question, so when they don't have a question, you definitely cannot map it to any Bloom's taxonomy level. And at the same time, it is also not possible to relate it to any program outcomes. I think all of you will be on the same page like me, that it is not possible. So generally, and you cannot quantitatively measure it. So there are many terminologies coming. One is a quantitative measure. You cannot quantitatively measure these things. You cannot have related to any POs. You cannot related to the Bloom's taxonomy. So typically, when you have a 30, 70 concept, say that 30 marks comes from the, um, you know, 30 marks comes from the internal evaluation and 70 marks comes from the, and 70 marks comes from the uh, external evaluation. This 30 marks can be divided like, Class test is twice in a semester, so you can have a 15 marks. So that can be the best of two unit tests or that can be the average of two unit tests, whatever. Again, decided by the institution. The exam cell, in a more proper way, every college has a exa examination control center. So they will be deciding it, what is going to be this, whether it will be the average of the two semester unit test or whether it is going to be a best of the two unit test. So 15 marks can come from the class test. Each assignment can be of five marks. So five, five, 10 marks. So this becomes 25 and then quiz can be of five marks. So total 30. So this 30 is a quantitative measure. This quantitative measure is going to help you in the direct attainment because you cannot measure the attendance and the viva. So this can be an example. And the next part, so that was all about this. So I am not discussing about the semester examination because anyway, there will be a question paper as I have mentioned, and there will be questions related to the different So indirect, so the previous part is all about the direct attainment, which can be measured, which directly from the performance of a student. So that is based on the performance of a student. Now this next part is the indirect attainment. So here, typically we have the Sorry for the interruptions. So indirect attainment, we have the program exit survey. So this program exit survey is conducted by the institution 
at the end of a program uh, uh, of a four year undergraduate program or a two year postgraduate program so there will be certain questions available and so that is defined by the institute and the students will be giving their feedback on it and from that some quantitative values will be calculated and it will be used there can be an alumni survey so alumni are those who have already passed out and they are going to answer certain questions there can be employer survey and also so, uh, there may be some input from the placements regarding uh, the uh, performance of the students since i when i began i started with that for the engineering institutions placement is one of the measuring uh, instrument or measuring uh, option for thinking how much their um, their process has been successful so here i have just given a small example of a uh, um, employer service i will just uh, make it a little bigger so you see even the employer survey has uh, certain questions like uh, what is the fundamental now these questions are defined by the institution it may also be defined by the department uh, generally employer survey this form should be defined should be created by the uh, training and placement cell of a college of an institution since uh, it should not relate to any particular program it should not relate to any particular department so typically it should be uh, centralized centrally defined and each question should be mapping to the pos as well as psos now since pos are common for an engineering program so the questions which are given should map to the pos of all the departments uniformly and when we talk about the psos since they are program specific and they are program specific in the sense they are department specific also so therefore that mapping will be different so these are some of the questions example questions and there are three fields there can be more than three fields also here it is three it can be more than this and the employers are asked to give their feedback on this and based on this whatever has been opted for like it is given 3 to 1 so an average is calculated and that average is used for calculating the uh, indirect attainment portion so this is in short a kind of uh, indirect attainment thing so uh, since it is not at all related to the curriculum so small weightage is given on this but this is important now at the end of this i will just uh, give you a small um, so this is the aict question paper where i want to show you how it has been mapped so you see uh, just give me 2 minutes i will just go to the complete so this is a ai model question paper for undergraduate program okay now we go for the data structures part because we are uh, from the beginning of the sessions we have been talking about data structures and data structures so so if you look at this uh, course data structures and algorithms um so the data structures and algorithm uh, course outcomes has been defined by the aict in this manner so first of all what is your point of view on this course outcome is it a good course outcome is it a bad course outcome is it an average course outcome what is your observation on this yeah. 
anybody what is your observation on this so this actually relates to the total discussion we have for the last 2 hours so what is your observation mm -hmm. anybody what is your observation like it's a good one it's a bad one it's an average one what is your understanding anybody anybody you can write in the chat box also uh, let's make it little interactive otherwise uh, it's uh, Uh, average uh, why is it uh, sir why do you think it is average so i cannot hear you are you telling something Yes. Okay. Uh, if you don't tell why do you think it is average or good, I cannot proceed with that answer. So I will just keep that part, and I will just go to the model question paper, and you see that here. Uh, a question is given and here it is mapped to the co so co3 so what is the question so suppose we wish to search a linked list of length n and a dot 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 whatever now what is my co3 here discuss the properties operations applications strengths and weaknesses of the different data structures and their effect on algorithms now the question here is how much we take advantage now they have mapped to co3 they have mapped to bloom's taxon or bloom's level level 3 so what do you think is it right because discuss the when the statement begins with the discuss the properties i don't know how we may answer we will be able to answer this question how we might take advantage so my my i i do, i i think it relates to co4 and regarding the bloom's taxonomy level so so if you look at the bloom's taxonomy if you look at the bloom's taxonomy so in the bloom's taxonomy level 3 it is applying it is application so in this case if you look at the question then it is like how we can take advantage of the hash values when searching the list so they are telling 2 3 i think it will be level 4 because it is more of not application rather it is analyzing so in both these cases my opinion differs because my opinion tells the first question should be co4 and level 4 so what is your opinion on this any opinions on this anything on this anybody see as i told again this is very relative what might be my understanding or my inference maybe different from your inference so uh, my inference tells it should be co4 and bt level 4 but you see this is an aict guideline given and they have thought like it will be co3 and bt level 3 so what i want to tell at the end of the session so i think uh, people have got little bit uh, uh, they have been attending the session for a, from morning so they have got little bit down now so 
so what my opinion is that at the end of the session is that that first of all what is needed mostly is the understanding of what is obe we should have a clear understanding about the obe we should know we should understand each and every statement of the program outcomes and the nba experts actually comes and they ask that what is the meaning <coughs> next we should understand that what are the different verbs in the six levels of the bloom's taxonomy how we can define a good course outcome and we should also understand the basic difference between a course objective and a course outcome once we understand what we want to deliver we should write down our cos we should divide our syllabus we should devise the cop or mapping again syllabus then not cop or mapping first the course outcome has been defined then the cop or mapping has been defined then is syllabus syllabus comes last after this we should have a proper way of assessing the performance of the students after we assess the performance of the students using different assessment tools we can calculate the attainment value again the process of attainment varies from institution to institution so for that the first thing needed is a target level which is fixed by the institute then we come also not fixed by the institute but a standard is set by the institute and that has to be passed by the through the proper channel by the department once it is done then we calculate the attainment if we achieve the target level then we should increase the target level in the next one if we haven't achieved then we should find out the gap and we should find out ways to mend that gaps and at the end of the day what is needed is that a proper understanding of this total process none of this process are separate they are all interconnected and understanding in one part will fail the whole system so it's like a whole machine working one failure in one part of the machine will put the whole machine good for nothing so that is what is going to happen so that is my understanding of the total concept and um, these are some of the references which i have used for creating this ppt and thank you so much any questions anything participants are uh, requested to uh, pose their questions if they have any ma'am already uh, had some interactive sessions and she tried to uh, present with an interactive session so if anyone have any question at the end of the session they can do it right now Yes, I will be very happy if anybody have any questions and if I can answer that. Yes. Nobody. Doesn't anybody have any questions? Okay then. Uh, thank you Hello. so much, ma'am. Hello. Okay. Is someone someone is? Hello, madam. Hello. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Yes. Go on. Uh, madam, uh, how the assignment and quiz, um, all those things, uh, in that person uh, attend? How those things are used in attainment? And I did not understand. that slides uh can you uh, repeat that slide yes sir one minute uh, at the attainment calculation of uh, assignment and quiz are you talking about this one sir yes 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 uh, because so, they are not mapping to any we can't map them no 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 the thing is that yeah. whenever you are giving an assignment assignment will have a question right Yes. So therefore, that's what I told. In a class test, you give a question paper. So that question paper will have some questions. In an assignment, there mm. will be some questions from your course. Mm. In quiz, quiz or MCQ, there will be certain questions from your course. 
So okay. all these questions will be mapped to the proper CO and will be mapped to the BT level. So once you have questions mapped to COs, BT level is a separate thing that is a standard. But for attainment calculation, you have some questions mapped to the COs. So therefore, from that, you will be able to calculate the attainment. But you cannot do that from the attendance because attendance doesn't have any question which is mapped to the CEO. Yes, yes. Okay. Right. So yeah. therefore, therefore, when I came to this, uh, I came to the, yes, there, here also group discussion. So group discussion, ah. how it can be used as an assessment tool because there the faculty can give a specific question on the course for a discussion in the open forum. And that question can be something like, uh, something like, for example, that- Madam, uh, it may be a topic uh, rather than a question. It may be a specific topic. Uh, a topic, it, it, you cannot have a topic and you can discuss. Group yeah. discussion means there should be always a for and a against. So say you give a question like, well, do you think, uh, do you think, or according to you, stack is a useful data structure. Yeah. So now the stack is a useful data structure. What the students will do here, they will try to elaborate on it. They will analyze why stack is not a good data structure or why stack is a good data structure. So which BT level it maps to? It maps to the level four. And regarding the COs, I cannot tell because COs, if I just check this example of whatever uh, I have given you as an example, uh, COs, so this CO. Oh. So now, if I just think about it, that stack is a good data structure, then according to this, I am thinking about two COs, CO1 and CO2. Why? Because I can answer this question only if I know the property of stack, I can answer this question only if I know what is the strength and weakness of stack. If I know these two things, then I can I can answer that uh, I, I can I can elaborate and I can debate on that topic, right? So I can either say no, it is not a good one, it is a, it is a bad one, or I can say yes, it is a good one. So when so your question is very simple, according to you, whether stack is a good data structure or not. But you are mapping it to the CO1 and CO2. You are mapping it to the BT level 4 because that is the analyze. Analyzing. The students have to analyze. Yes. Now you can take this question and you can. Uh, so you are going to put some marks. Say you have set up five marks for this group discussion part. So yes. now you can evaluate the students based on their answers. That is the analytical power of the faculty. So the faculty analyzes, put some marks for each student on this five, on this five, and then that will be taken up for the attendance one. So that is how you can do it. Okay, but okay. for the attendance one, you cannot do that because for attendance, there are no questions. Mm -hmm. Then how it can be evaluated, how it can be, it's a continuous process for the improvement of the student. So generally, though, Internally, we, we, we put an emphasis on the attendance for the students. We say that you have a five marks on it, so you have to attend. But when you are calculating the attainment of the course, attendance doesn't have much implication there. That is what. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone, uh, anyone else have a question for ma'am? Madam, on me, madam, in uh, indirect analysis, sir. Uh, yes. Madam, only we have that survey only, madam. Uh, is there any other other uh, methods of uh, uh, measuring indirect methods, madam? No. Indirect methods are typically done using only the surveys. So different kind of surveys, like I told, you can have the exit survey. That are the most three popular ones. You can have the employer. You can have alumni. So. This now, here also, I need to mention one thing that sometimes you may omit the alumni survey. The reason is that, say, we are following our, our curriculum has been designed in 2020. 
So our curriculum, when in 2020 it has been designed, the data structures code may have been revised and the syllabus has been updated. Now, alumni will be who? Alumni will be anyone who is passing from, I mean, from 2022 and backwards, like 22, 21, 20, 19, and so on. So if you are taking a feedback from any student or any alumni who have passed till 2022, he will not, so he or she will not able to comprehend the change has been, that has been made in the 2020 curriculum. Because the curriculum which he has studied is an old curriculum. So a student who has studied an old curriculum, how can he comprehend the change which has been made in a new curriculum? Am I, am I, uh, am I on this point? Yes, so, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Because a 2020 alarm, uh, uh, student will be passing out in 2024. So when he goes out, he will be able to answer you that question that whether this course is, uh, this uh, uh, data structure course is really good or not. But again, the thing is that since indirect attainment uh, uh, surveys are taken at the end of our program, so at the end of a program means maybe that alumni who has passed out in 2024 after passing out, uh, maybe in 2025, he can go and answer. But alumni survey is a little bit, uh, little bit, you know, contradicting part because of this issue which I mentioned. Because a student who is not studying the curriculum, he or she may not be able to tell you whether it is a good one or bad one in a general way, in a general way of the thing. So that is the thing. And other things are not applicable. Maybe placement comes into picture. Maybe the student feedback also comes into picture, but that depends institution to institution. But these are the mostly popular ones. Yes. Yeah, in my point of view, NSS or NCC can also be included. Indirect, uh, indirect methods are not, madam. NSS, NSS uh, maybe the, the students yes, are doing. Yes, for no? the engineer and the society. But again, you see, sir. NSS activity now has been, I think it has been made mandatory for the first year students. It has been included in the curriculum by the AICT, I think for the first year students. So if it is a mandate, if it is for all, yes, it can be included. But again, in the first semester only they do, all the students, after that they do not do it. So you cannot follow something uh, which is not uniformly conducted. So that is one thing. So there may be something uh, contradiction which may come there. But yes, uh, these are all debatable. Actually, it, it, it needs to be discussed and uh, um, uh, revi revisions in this process of uh, attainment calculation should be there. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that's why I'm very much confused that uh, in indirect assessment, uh, uh, yes. which should be included? Uh, well, sorry, the no, a survey uh. should be there. This survey should be different types. You know, it is only surveys. It will be of different types. That's all. Nothing else. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Now, now, sir. Uh, now, why, why? Because there is a point. The point no. is that when we are... Uh, doing an engineering course or any program, our aim is not for the students to learn only the curriculum subjects. Direct assessment is the assessment of the curriculum courses. We also want to see whether they have developed that either that, that uh, effective domain or not, whether they have the ability to adapt themselves to the changing environment, whether they're able to answer questions or whether they're able to provide their feedback on something not related to the curriculum or not. So it's like an overall uh, uh, professional development of a student. So that's why we go for the indirect attainment. That is the concept for the indirect attainment. Yes. Okay, okay. And as, madam, is there any rules and regulations uh, such that uh, we need to consider 20% of uh, indirect assessment or 30% of indirect assessment? No, right? Because uh, here we no. are considering 20% uh, 20, 20 and 80% direct, madam. Most of the institutions are following that, sir. 
the reason as i told is very simple since the program is uh, the students we want the students to learn about the core courses of the of the program so we give more weightage to the direct attainment which is directly related to the curriculum courses and we put less emphasis 20% to their uh, indirect part that is the service and all that and this varies from institutions to institutions i have never found any mandate put by the aict or ugc regarding or nba regarding how much weightage should be on uh, direct and indirect attainment i have not come across it so um, it can be defined but yes it is always like this most of the institutions are almost 99% are following the same okay okay ma'am thank you thank you so much thank you so much ma'am uh, will you be taking any questions will be will you be taking more questions if uh, if uh, they are having i i don't have any problem if okay. any questions are there no issue okay. Um, if you face any problem, disturb you again, ma'am. <laughs> yes, yes. If you, if you face any problem in future, uh, we will disturb you again. Okay, no problem. No problem. See, as I told, <laughs> your station is my, very, very beautiful, ma'am. Well, actually, my understanding uh, has been um, uh, means I I have understood it in this manner. So I was, I'm very happy to share this with you people because then when my understanding, actually as a teacher, all of us knows, we read, we understand. When we teach, we know that when the question starts coming, our, our understanding becomes clearer and clearer. So that is, this is, this is a whole discussion issue only. There is no, it is like an NP complete problem. You know, there are no solutions to it. It will keep on going and going on going. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, we are at the very end of the session, so I request our uh, head of the department of uh, CSE department, Ms. Shopna Haldar, ma'am, to present uh, our speaker with the memento that we prepared. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Ma'am, this is a small appreciation from Greater Kolkata College of yes. Engineering and Management. And take it digitally at that moment. Yes, I will take it digitally. Please send it to me digitally. Through definitely, me. definitely, ma'am. Definitely, definitely. No, I am thankful. I am thankful that you have given me an opportunity to speak on this uh, topic. I really uh, loved uh, delivering a lecture because uh, I also came across so many... Um, so many informations when I was preparing the slides. So I am also thankful to you people. I am I am so much thankful to the organizer, to Principal Madam and everyone that you have considered me to be a speaker for this event. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Um, so we are at the very end of the uh, end of our session. Uh, today is the I mean uh, this is the end of the first day of the faculty development program that that is going to be uh that is going to be i mean we are going to be here for five days right and today is the uh, first day and it was thank you to you ma'am for giving us an enriching and insightful uh, lecture uh yeah you can we can end the session here right okay so i will take a leave thank you to all i will take a leave now thank you ma'am thank you Thank you so much. Participants can leave now. The feedback link uh, would be provided. Okay. Uh, and uh, participants are requested to fill the assignment and the feedback yes. form. Okay. It will be provided. It will be provided in the WhatsApp group. Yes. Yes. Please, please, please follow. Okay. You can leave now. Mm -hmm. Thank you.